WCTE's coverage of the Putnam County Fair is brought to you by Swallows Insurance Agency, The Realty Firm, Bailey Tire Company, The Putnam County Farm Bureau, Southern Landscape Supply, The City of Cookville, Putnam County, The Putnam County Fair, and by Twin Lakes. <laughs> Welcome to WCTE's live coverage of the Putnam County Agriculture Fair. I'm Avery Hutchins and I'm going to be your co-host tonight with Randy Adams. Welcome. Hi Avery. You know it's going to be a great night here. It's the first night of the fair. The midway's going. The, the fair wheel's pumping. You can smell the corn dogs and the hot dogs and the popcorn. <laughs> and we've got a rodeo fixing to happen right behind us with eight states represented with our cowboys and cowgirls tonight. Lots of great things going on. It is. It's going to be exciting. And we're going to be here for a couple of hours bringing you this live coverage. And we just hope that you will enjoy it at home. And if you're not at home and you want to come on out, you've still got time to buy some tickets at the gate. You still do. This is a two-night rodeo, so this is the first night. And join us here tonight, and then tomorrow night, come on out and, and see it in person. There you go. Now, Randy, it's a little different this time when they if they come out and see it. The, the arena is a little bit smaller. Do you want to explain smaller. that? Well, uh, the Lone Star Rodeo Company, who's producing our rodeo, and they're the stock contractor. We'll be talking to you about that a little more as the night goes on. Uh, and they're an award-winning stock contractor, one of the best in the southeast. But they've got two rodeos going on this weekend at the same time. They've got one up in Kentucky. So their big arena is up in Kentucky. They had to borrow the pin that's behind us. So it's really cut down the size of the arena. What that's going to do is make the horses and bulls buck a lot harder, and it's going to be really quick for our timed event contestants as they're roping and running barrels and uh, team roping tonight. I think it sounds exciting. It's going to be a great night. Yeah. The ground is good. Uh, this ground is always a little harder, mm -hmm. but the ground crew's done a good job with it, and it rained on it, so we don't yep. have to deal with dust Yeah. Uh, this year. The weather, the clouds, yeah, it looks like we're going to have a nice night. It's, it's cooling off a little bit. I like it. And uh, it's, it's just, it's great fair weather. It really is. It really is. And it's always fun to come out to the agriculture fair, as they mentioned in the title. I mean, there's lots of things that they can see here. They can go over to the farm area, check out the farm animals. And all of that is part of your ticket when you come in, really. So even well, if you is. don't ride the ride, you're still going to have a really great experience. You know, the women's building always uh, has some of the great canned goods and, and handcrafts that the ladies in the area have made. Uh, beautiful to see. You've got food right behind us. And a lot of our food vendors here have restaurants all over the Upper mm. Cumberland, but they choose fair week to come here and, and serve their food. So even if you get a chance to come out for lunch, come on out to the fairgrounds. It's a great it's, place to be. I'm really excited. So, Randy, what are they going to see at the rodeo tonight? Well, you're going to see all the standard rodeo events. You're going to see, we're going to start off with saddle bronc riding. Then you're going to see calf roping, uh, steer wrestling, bareback. Uh, we don't have any bareback riders tonight, which is unusual. But you're going to have uh, steer wrestling. You're going to have team roping. You're going to have cowgirls breakaway, which is becoming a phenomenally popular event all over the nation. In fact, we've got one contestant here tonight from New York that's come all the way down here to compete. Uh, as we get ready to get started, of course, you're going to have bull riding mm -hmm. and barrel racing. So lots lots of great events. It is. We've got them right here for you. We're going to be bringing them to you in the arena, too, with our arena announcer, Mark Northall. He's from Knoxville, Tennessee, but he's a professional announcer, been doing this for years. Well, that's great. And then there's always the the fun, the clown, right? Well, he's got he, a big he, job tonight. He, he's got a, a big smaller job area because, well, he's got two jobs. He's got to entertain the crowd. Right. And then during the bull riding, he'll be trying to keep our cowboys safe. And he'll be that cowboy lifesaver out there trying to keep the bulls away from him when they buck off. Yeah, I don't know. Thank you. <laughs> so I, so you he's got a big, he, he looks funny and he is funny. Yeah. Greek mm -hmm. Alec is, is a hilarious and a very professional clown. But he's also got a very serious job that he's going to take care of. And he's too. from Rogersville, Alabama, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. He yeah. is. He's from all over the place. So okay. it's going to be a great night right here. Brought to you by WCTE, your station in the Upper Cumberland. Yeah. And this is just one of the things that you get to see uh, on WCTE with your coverage and support our station. That's right. Because it is. It's your station. It's our station. So thanks for being with us. Yeah. And, you know, since you mentioned that, we should also mention our sponsors. We have broadcast sponsors tonight. And we do want to make sure that they are recognized. And you'll see their spots run throughout the evening. But just a quick mention, we have Bailey Tire Company. Swallows Insurance, Realty Firm, 
the Southern Landscaping Supply, Farm Bureau of Tennessee, um, great sponsors right here um, helping us bring you this live broadcast tonight. So make sure that they are, um, you're patroning them. So. Well, we're going to a break, but we'll be back with rodeo action right after this. Next time on Antiques Roadshow. Godzilla has become the ultimate pop icon. How cool is Godzilla? Everybody loves Godzilla. It's really a great find. I'm so happy you brought it in today. Find out more next time on Antiques Roadshow from the Hotel Del Coronado. It's Jack and the Bones. John Tavius Willis is a young guitarist and singer from Georgia who embodies the rhythms and feeling of traditional country blues. Well, the world's in a tangle. It's time to make a visit with John Tavius Willis coming up on David Holt's State of Music. Welcome to the 96th annual Putnam County Fair. Tonight we're at the Lone Star Rodeo and I'm one of your hosts, Dawson Davidson. I'm joined by the beautiful Hi, I'm Caroline Moore, and I'm so excited to be here tonight. We're so excited to showcase all of the talents of tonight's rodeo and give you so many inside scoops on behind the scenes. Stay tuned for more. We'll see you soon. Thank you, guys. You coming back to us before? Who's hot? Uh oh. <laughs> Standing up. Uh, okay, well, welcome back to the Rodeo, um, we're here at the Putnam County Fair. Uh, right now we've got the, the flag being presented uh, in the arena. Well, rodeo is a very traditional sport and it's rooted right here. It's America's very own sport. And we always start off every rodeo by the presentation of our colors. We'll have the national anthem and a prayer in a minute. And that's the way every rodeo starts off anywhere in the United States. Uh, and we always are very proud of our colors. Uh, this young lady's been carrying the flag for a long time. That flag is heavy, and that's a lot of weight to carry it and smile and, and do what she does. But it's a beautiful presentation. She's going to bring it into the middle arena and park it. And, of course, we have everyone out here on their horses. Well, they're getting ready to go because we're going to roll right into the performance right after this. Yep. and every performance. As we think about our friends up there in Washington, D.C. that make decisions for you and I each and every day of our lives, they've told us for a long time you could not do this in our public schools anymore. They told us you should not do this in our public sporting events anymore. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Cookville, Tennessee, we're here to tell you one thing about the American cowboy and cowgirl. Our dollar bill still says, in God we trust. So ladies and gentlemen, if you would please, no matter what your faith is here tonight, take just a moment, bow your heads, and join us in the cowboy prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we pause at this time, mindful of the many blessings you bestowed upon us. We ask that you'll be with us this rodeo, and we ask that you'll guide us in the arena of life. We as cowboys and cowgirls don't ask for special favors like to draw around a shoot fighting bull, a steer that won't lay, or to never break a barrier. We don't even ask for all daylight runs. We do ask, Lord, that you'll help us live our lives here on earth as cowboys and cowgirls in such a manner that when we make that last inevitable ride to the country up there where the grass grows lush green, stir up high, and the waters run cool, clear, and deep, 
that you'll take us by the hand and you'll say welcome to heaven. Cowboys and cowgirls, your entry fees are paid. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And now, ladies and gentlemen, if you've not done so already, please rise. Gentlemen, please remove cover for the singing of the greatest song ever written about the greatest land ever born, our national anthem. Keep your eyes on that beautiful red, white, and blue. We welcome them on to the arena floor. They've come from near and far to compete for each and every one of you here tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, Thursday night in Cookville, Tennessee is Cowboy Town. Here's our grand entry. So what you're seeing in the arena now, that's the Cowboys and Cowgirls that are timed event contestants they were on their horses and they're going to be competing tonight but they're being led through the arena by the by the american flag and our and our flag carrier uh, so it's just a way for them to get out there so you're seeing the majority of our contestants here tonight kind of lets their horses get warmed up get in the arena and lets everybody see them absolutely so i'm sure there's a lot that goes into this randy what time do they arrive here today to get this started they've been here probably for <laughs> some of them the last 10 minutes but oh. <laughs> ideally they've been here for probably an hour hour and a half okay uh, you've got to get your horse brushed off saddled uh, rigged up which you can see that they have on lots of equipment other than just a saddle yep uh, they want to get the horse warmed up because th we've got two athletes in the arena tonight we've got a four-legged which is the one on the ground right and right. we've got the two-legged up on right. top so they've got to get him warmed up, uh, make sure that their horse is ready to go, kind of get him used to everything if they're riding a young horse. Uh, they and check their compete. draw sheet. Well, you have people compete in more than one category? You do. Okay. Uh, some of them are competing for the all-around championship. So you'll see some of the same people, uh, calf roping, steer wrestling, and team roping tonight. Uh, girls, mm -hmm. you'll see them breakaway roping and barrel racing. So what you're gonna, what's going to happen is that they're competing in these multiple events. They might be swapping horses in between. Uh, so you've, you've kind of got all that going on, too. You see a cowboy right there leading yeah. a horse. That may be a uh, horse that they're going to use in steer wrestling here in a minute. Yeah. Uh, and steer wrestling horses, and we'll talk about that at the steer wrestling event, yeah. they're, they're meant to run wide open. They're the drag racers oh. of, of rodeo. So we'll see that coming up, too. Right. We're going to start it off right now by going down to the far end to our saddle bronc riding. We've got two contestants tonight, uh, Light, uh, Landon Mariner. Landon mm -hmm. Mariner's from Ringgold, Ringo. Georgia. Mm -hmm. There's lots of great cowboys down in that north Georgia country. And Chris Riddles from Clemens, South Carolina. Now, saddle bronc, they've got a, a, a saddle on the horse, obviously, but it doesn't have a horn. And they've got a bronc rein. So they're lifting that bronc rein, and they're trying to balance their weight against the bronc rein while they spur. This is the classic event of rodeo that you see. Uh, 
and, and you see the, the rhythm and everything. The spurs have to be out over the point of the horse's shoulder they when they start. Back a little bit, right? He's going to lean back yep. a little bit. Not as far as the bareback rider, but he's got to lean back because if, if he gets his grip on his rope too short for this particular horse, the horse is going to catapult him over the front. We call that going over the dashboard. <laughs> He's going to start off. His his spurs have to be on the point of the horse's shoulder when the horse's feet hit the ground for the first time. That's called the markout rule. If he okay. misses that, you're going to see a flag thrown in the arena from one of our two judges. Gotcha. They're judged. Half of this is from the horse, and half of it's for the cowboy. So you're going to see a total score perfect would be 100. Half of it belongs to the horse, half of it belongs to the cowboy. And it's okay. we talk about the luck of the draw. It depends on if he drew a good horse or not, capable of getting his 50 points worth so that the cowboy can stay on for eight seconds and get his 50 points worth. That's right. right. We're not going to see a 100-point score tonight. Okay, well. Nothing against these cowboys and cowgirls or the stock from the Lone Star Rodeo Company. You're just not going to see it because it doesn't happen. So there's only two cowboys tonight. Uh, I don't know if there's anybody tomorrow night or not, but you're going to have, uh, you know, they're going for all the prize money. Entry fee here is $300. Uh, the added money is $300 per event. So the cowboys are going to combine that. And we've got a cowboy out, apparently. Yep, he didn't make it too long. Uh-oh. <laughs> so. Yeah, I and you can see there, well, they're, they're going to try to catch we the did horse, have bring him back in, maybe. Boy, he's still going, isn't he? Well, and I'll take it back because that is a bareback rigging on that horse. So apparently we did have a bareback rider that wasn't on our list. Oh, okay. Yeah, so right. You don't see the saddle on that there. Was, that was our bareback rider. That's basically a suitcase handle tied to the horse, and you, with a rosin glove, you put your hand in it and, and mm -hmm. get a really good grip and mm -hmm. try to stay there for eight That's seconds. Wow. It didn't work for that cowboy. That cowboy on the I mean, the athletic five, ability for these, I mean, these guys are amazing. Oh, they're athletes. And I'm, I'm sure they've been training for years. Every, everybody compete. in the arena, they're athletes. Uh, As they win here, do they go on to compete in other places? They'll, uh, they're up here Thursday night. They'll have a rodeo Friday night. They may be in, in a, uh, they could make as many as five rodeos this weekend. Okay. Between being in Slack, which is after our performance, now here's the saddle bronc riding. He's tapped off yes, well. Sir. Watch okay. his spurs, his rhythm. Oh, Just yeah. a night. When this is done right, it's a very smooth ride. The pickup men move in, we'll help him get to the ground. The ground. That's our, I mean, our that looked like a really service. good one. Looked like a pretty good ride down. right there. The horse says, I'm not finished yet. Yeah, right. <laughs> He's going to come down here and play a little now, bit. We'll take a look down to our pro officials. We'll see if they have got to say about that ride. Good night. Morgan rides on a scale of 1 to 25. It's all this cool air has got them all excited. <laughs> well, it does, but they they know when that chute opens, it's time to show right time. Now. How about you make some noise for 70 points? 70 point ride. 70 point ride, and I okay, think out of 100, that was landed. Right? Uh, 70 point ride. Really nice way to start off. Mm -hmm. okay. So you, you kind of got an idea of, of the event, and apparently we had uh, you know, maybe one set of bronc rider, one bareback. Mm -hmm. on the bronc ride yep. Here so that's what we did. So there we go. And then up next is going to be our steer the wrestling. Floor, and well, we're, we're going to bring our funny man in, and he's oh. going <laughs> to put a little entertainment on us. So we're going to get ready down at this end of the arena, which you can't see right behind us. There's now they're opening up the chutes and getting ready and getting the calves loaded or the steers loaded for the steer wrestling. That's right. I think that's what's coming up. It looks like we have five participants. Alabama, Kentucky, Tennessee is what's being represented. Well represented. Now, rodeo started on the working ranches in the American West. So when you had the doctor the calves, you didn't have fences. So you had to folks? rope him, yeah. or you had to get a partner to help you rope him, or if you didn't have a rope, you just had to jump off and grab him. <laughs> That's kind of where this event started. Yeah. It's steer wrestling. The slang term for it is bulldogging because mm -hmm. the Cowboys used to, a bulldog will grab a steer by the lip and hold him down. The Cowboys used to bite the steer's lip. They'd throw him and bite his lip and hold him down and get their hands up. Yeah, the okay. look on your face says it all. <laughs> they did that. Uh, wow. That, 
so that was that was why it was called Bull and, and they did that to to brand them or what was right. the purpose take doctor them or brand them okay uh, so we're going back to our first break at the backstage pass okay Dawson and Caroline BBS is proud to present one voice the songs we share join Luke Frazier and the American Pops Orchestra for a celebration of uniquely American music Celebrate the music of country. Starring Leslie Jordan, with performances by Jake Blunt, Claiborne Elder, Nick Garris, Travis Howard, Sonora May, and more. And welcome back to Backstage Pass at the 96th Annual Putnam County Fair. We're here with the gorgeous Ferris of the Fair 2022 Addison Bray. How are you? I'm good. How are you? We're so wonderful. So tell me, what does it mean to you to win Ferris of the Fair? It's everything. The Putnam County title isn't about the crown or the pretty dresses. It's more about the impact that I can make this year on my community. I Absolutely. truly want to serve. Yes. What are you going to be up to this week at the fair? Well, I'm going to be here every night. So if you see me, come say hi. I'll either be in Grandma's barnyard or up here on the stage yes. or handing out ribbons in the barn. Addison is a young fair of the fair, and she is so eager to work and serve this community, and we're so honored to have you here tonight. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here. We're going to be back with more Backstage Pass at the Lone Star Rodeo, the 96th Annual Putnam County Fair, very soon. Stay tuned. major problem that's going on all around the world. Love purely for the sake of love. I'm not a political figure, I am a humanitarian figure. And always have been and always will be. How can we learn from the past? It is a story that Americans are challenged with all the time. It's haunting, cruel, tragic, threatening, shocking, unbelievable, evil, illogical, xenophobic, genocide, danger, death. But that's not all there is to this story. Well, Randy, it, it wouldn't be the fair without some of the pr the queens out there, the princesses. It, it and you know, we've got to. Oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm tied off. Uh, we've got a great bunch this year, and some. Be always beautiful young ladies, but when you look past just the physical appearance, these girls are excellent students. They carry themselves well. You just heard uh, one of the young ladies speak, and uh, they represent Putnam County so very well. And our, our queen contestants always do very well yep. in state competitions and beyond. I think so. Yeah, they represent us very well, and um, they're all ages, and they, they get a lot out of this, and including maybe a scholarship. So, oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, the, and there's a good shot of them. And, you know, they're here tonight. They're mm -hmm. representing, yep. uh, getting the fair kicked off. I think their, their contest wrapped up last Sunday, I believe. Yep. Yep. But there's a lot that get, goes into that, just like a lot a of the year. rodeo. Yep. Yeah. So, you know, we hear some talking going on over in the arena. You mentioned that the that's clowns Greek, are out, maybe. That's Greek Elliot. He's our barrel man, but he's also our rodeo clown. He's a funny man. Yeah. Uh, true professional, been doing yep. this for a long time. Yep. And he's doing his uh, fried chicken on the moon act, which <laughs> you got a glimpse a little earlier of a golf cart with a chicken on top. Oh, God. These guys write their own material, uh, they do their own skit, they put it together, and yep. they're, they've got a very serious part. But then what he's doing is giving us time to get everything ready at this end so that we'll be ready for the calf roping Absolutely. and the other roping events. It's going to start off with the steer roping. Yep. So, you know, as th these cowgirls and cowboys, I mean, what kind of training do they go into? I mean, do they go to school for this? Or what is yes. they live on farms and they just well, kind of are raised around it? Used to, you, were, you had to be ranch raised or uh, to learn it, to know it. Mm -hmm. I was fortunate enough to meet uh, Ari and Martha Josie, and we were starting uh, in our business. We were starting to make some horse equipment at the time, and we we got hooked up with Ari and Martha. Uh, they actually called in, talked to Sonny Allen, who's cook for legend himself. Uh, but we were able to, you know, and I'd, I'd worked horses, I'd shown horses. Uh, won my first ribbon right here in this arena when I was 12 or 13 years old. But you know, I got to go to school and learn how to calf rope. 
Debbie went to school to learn how to barrel race. Uh, so we have both worked up through the professional ranks. We were instructors at that school. Uh, our daughter Terry was raised at the ranch in, in Texas and at the school. And she's been an instructor. Her husband, Chris, is a roper, and he's been an instructor. So wow. we're the only uh, the only family that husband and wife and child and, and in-law, mm -hmm. all four have been instructors. It's wow. the well, well, oldest, oldest. How old are you when you, you start? Do you try to start as young as possible? Uh, my oh, grandson is six years old, gentlemen, just turned, he's school fixing school to turn six. Lord. They and he's in his third year of, of junior rodeo. Wow. So there you see the chicken mobile in the arena. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, you start young, but you don't have to. You can learn this sport. There are people yeah. all over the place that are willing to teach you. You uh, you practice. You throw. We used to throw 100 loops a day at a dummy practicing mm -hmm. to get the muscle memory down to throw. Well, you ride your horse to exercise him. You practice if, as a calf roper. We practice tying calves. If you're bulldogging, you the, the joke is you go by a mailbox uh, and at 30 miles an hour hanging on the side of the pickup truck and jump off. Because that, that's kind of what it's like to, to steer wrestle. So, but no, you actually you practice on dummies and you do things to keep yourself in shape, to keep your mind in shape. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, I mean, it sounds an like a, a, an amazing career path for people, and I'm sure they, they participate in shows like this all over the country, and they move up in the ranks. And a lot of fun. So right now we're beginning our steer wrestling, and that first contestant was Blake Walker. Blake Walker is going to come up empty here tonight. Cook, well, you know how to make him feel better right now. Make a little noise for you, Cowboy, if you would, please. So, no time for Blake on that, but we're going to Gunnar Ramsey now, Falkville, Alabama, Cowboy. Yep. And, uh... I hope you're enjoying this live coverage tonight. Uh, you can watch our stream. Uh, on uh, through WCTE.org. If you have someone that may Let's not be, uh, they, maybe they are not at home right now and they want to check it out, they can check it out at WCTE.org and check standards. that stream. And uh, we will be here again next week Ramsey. with some live coverage. Here's a cowboy chasing not one, but two gold trophy buckles that say world I guess champion we're ready to go. here in 2022. So Gunnar Ramsey. We'll get Gunnar Ramsey. Yeah. We'll Two-time world champion fixing the steer wrestle for you right now. Get getting in the box. As he backs into the corner. He's from Folkville, that Alabama. Barrier line gets strung across the front of that box. Design. Okay. Give our steer the advantage here tonight. Definitely enjoy more live straight, coverage later this week um, the as they get ready, the game, ready before we go back to that three. on uh, next Friday. Uh, next Saturday Thursday and Friday, August 11th and 12th, so we'll be bringing you live coverage right here from the arena. I believe it's a tractor pull. And I just thought I heard something. Well, he's in. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Well. So, you kind of saw the back end of how that ends up. Yeah, he doesn't look like he's getting up too well, quick. I'm just seeing what I saw, that cowboy got a horn in the side. Ooh. Uh, and he's hurting pretty good. But we don't have uh, professional trainers. We don't have, uh, we've got an ambulance. Right. We don't have a medical staff. The cowboys will tape themselves up and, and send themselves on down the road. There's not a... You know, th right. th there's nobody out there to take care of him. Right. So Let's go to he'll, have, he'll have to take care of himself. But just from seeing well, the way he was acting, he got a horn in the side. Mm. We'll show this Set entire around. event, I uh, hope, no right now with J.C. Duncan, Murray, Kentucky Cowboy. And what he's going to do, right, he's going to ride his horse, that little string in front of the box. Mm -hmm. That's the barrier. The we'll be talking about it as the evening he goes. Said, All right, let's go. But now he's going to slide down at the back. Oops. So the idea there was he's going to slide down at the back, get a, an arm over the steer, and the horse would <laughs> he, carry he him up to the front great. of the steer, cradle the horn, well, then uh, we pull the steer's nose top, up tough luck and for back, Casey, which will take his feet out from under him. Uh, hey, didn't quite work that way, so he took a no What's time done? on that. What are you doing over there? Yeah, what are you doing? There we okay, go. Okay, here it is. So yeah. just didn't quite, just didn't yeah. quite make it. <laughs> hey. Now, 
these cowboys and cowgirls will go to a bunch of rodeos, maybe up to five this weekend. After the rodeo tonight, we have more contestants than we can get in the show. So that's called slack. And those cowboys and cowgirls will compete later tonight. After the lights and, and camera and the sound and the crowd's gone. But and they may ask for slack here tonight so that the next they can be somewhere else earlier in the evening. Somebody may be competing tonight somewhere and then come here for slack. So they'll make two rodeos tonight. Wow. They'll do the same thing tomorrow night, Saturday morning. They may be at a slack somewhere. Hit a matinee performance Saturday. Uh, go somewhere on Saturday afternoon, Sunday or Saturday night, and then hit uh, maybe a Sunday afternoon performance right. as well. Wow. You can make five to eight rodeos in the southeastern circuit of the professional series in the southeast alone. Wow. They're so they're stretching the barrier up in front of the box. That gives okay. the steer a head start. There's a rope around the steers, and we'll be around the calf's neck. Mm -hmm. And if the cowboy gets out too quick, mm -hmm. breaks that barrier, it's a 10-second penalty. Gotcha. The steer, when he hits the end of it, will actually release that from in front of the cowboy, and it won't break. Mm -hmm. He's got a partner on the other side. That's the hazer, and he's going to keep that steer pushed up. We talked about a short pin. Yep. That time, they got to the end before they got caught up with the steer. So the short pin cost that cowboy here. Mm -hmm. But again, everybody this weekend is competing in the same arena, so yeah. they've all got the same chance. Same chance. And I'm assuming they score about the same. Are we all still still trying to get to the 100 points? Right. Okay. Well, now here you're just going by straight time. Just straight time, okay. Right, so it's the clock starts okay. when the steer hits the end of that barrier. Yep. <laughs> and then the clock stops when the cowboy throws the steer and all Talk four feet are facing cowboys. the same direction. Okay. In the calf roping, it'll be when the cowboy gets his hands up. And then in the team roping, it'll be when we face. Breakaway roping will be when the rope breaks from the saddle horn. And barrel racing will just be starting and stopping just like a regular race. Wow. Bradley Smith now. Paris, Tennessee. Paris, Tennessee. Very first pro rodeo I was ever entered in was Paris, Tennessee. It's uh, the fish fry rodeo because it's there during the big fish fry event Ooh. in Paris. I bet that was good. It was good. <laughs> yeah. I'm not, I, I wonder if those people get tired of smelling fried fish, though, after about 10 days. No. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Probably not. Probably not. All right. Caleb wanting to make sure his horse is standing right. So sure the guy on the other side, right. that's the hazer. That's Let's his partner on that. Oh, Whoa. Gosh. That steer set up. Yeah. So he, he put the brakes on. Yep. And it's Cowboy rode right be. by. Kind of like in top in the first Top Gun. For Caleb you know, Maverick here tonight. Yeah, right. the, the same thing. The steer saw the movie. Our pro looking and he stopped. Official and, and that's exactly what happened. How about you give now, Caleb a little How old are the steers? Uh, I know they're still young. Uh, they're three or four years old. Three or four years old. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't know what that is in steer years. Oh, okay. But they're three or four years in, in our years. Our final steer wrestler tonight's going to be Caleb Little. Yeah. Dexter, Kentucky. Okay. And so the prize money, there'll be prize money awarded? Yes. After they, their hey, entry fee money plus mm -hmm. the added money. And most events will pay based on how many All right. are entered. So mm -hmm. we'll, we'll have some more tomorrow night. Okay. It normally pays four places for a rodeo this size. Fantastic. Uh, so you'll pay 40, 30, 20, 10 percent of the prize pot. Right. That's pretty good. So if it's a hobby or it might be your career. It can. Yeah. Uh, she did. You know, the audience, we've got a good turnout tonight. Lots of people right. have, have turned nice. out to see this. Very nice and, uh, crowd. You know, this Putnam County Agriculture well, Fair was, was awarded a big award this year. Uh, I think Fair of the Year. Uh, for the state of Tennessee, right. so we congratulate them for all the hard work uh, that they did to qualify for that. It's really exciting. Well, they're one of the top fairs in the state every year, and our our fair board, or fair committee, if you want to call them, they work. Man, those guys work all year long, and then when it comes oh, no. fair time, they're out here well, 20, 22 hours a day, maybe. Page. All money going that. to Falkwell, Alabama. Uh, How about you make making some Making sure that everything in, in every points, arena, five. no pun intended, but the right. one behind us all the way out, yeah. everything's happening and working. That's, yep. Well, and it's a it's a long-time tradition for 
for our community, but for many communities across the country about around this time of year. People are well, celebrating the end of the summer. And, 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 it's, and it's something, you know, the agricultural fairs are basically harvest festivals. Those of you not familiar with this event, uh, early harvest times. We're going to go into our calf roping now. And this is Daryl Thrasher. This is a really good cowboy. I used to compete with Daryl. He's down in Columbia, Tennessee. Now he's got a little string in his mouth. He's got the bigger string under his arm. The barrier goes up now on this side. The calf gets the same advantage. Daryl is going to rope him, get off, throw him to the ground, and then tie any three legs. These calves are conditioned to this. They are. They're trained to take the jerk three times, and to, to take the ties. So, and we'll they're in training now. too. They the they get Tennessee. run through the shoots, and so they build up their stamina. And they're athletes too, competing. So you've got Growing two four-legged we'll athletes and a two-legged athlete competing in this event. Said, All right, let's go rope it. There's a kid. Oh, got their big rope on him. Pick him up. Lay them down. Thanks, front Look leg out, gathers Tennessee. up. Oh, Daryl. Oh, oh gosh. One wrap, two wraps, there you go. and a pitch. Yes, <laughs> there you go. Oh, uh oh. <laughs> Those horses work yeah. a little bit oh. too much. Yeah. Now, that calf has to stay tied for six seconds after the cowboy where. rides up. So you now time starts. Okay. And your judge there in the white shirt is watching, okay. making sure that the legs blood. stay crossed. Yep. Three. Looks like we're going to set the pace at 12 and 3. 12.3 seconds is our time, 12 and 3. Uh, right. That's a leader and a nice run. That's nice. With a short pin, a we might see some times uh, in the in the eights and nines here tonight. What's that, Greg? Daryl would have been a little quicker if he had missed strung him. 12 and 3, that's right. Uh, that missed string him yep. <laughs> really. Yep. really oh, he gets him up replay. nice. He gets yeah. the string on his front leg. But then... Oh, he missed that yeah. second leg. Or, oh. Drop it. You want to grab the bottom leg, and the top leg lays inside what, your what wrist when you out? gather them up and break them over. Gotcha. <laughs> and like you Stop mentioned, the, the calves have been trained for this, so it's they're they're accustomed to it. They know what's going oh, on. They're it, they're not getting hurt. It's oh no, uh, uh, and it's something they've been doing. And it's if you used to. if you hurt that calf. Tennessee. Then you're not going to be able to tie him like you need to. You're not going to get a good time on it. Yeah. The last thing a cowboy Look wants now, to do is hurt any of the livestock. Absolutely. And the Peter rules Tate's are very right, much in rope. place to protect the livestock. Yep, yep. Ethan Tays of Livingston, and he went, to be for Ethan roped Tays him pretty quick. He's gonna leave out here Didn't quite get the rope around his neck. Yeah. Takes him no time. Folks, That's going to take us now to Lane Webb, Birdstown. Lane Webb is an up and coming superstar. He's, he's really been winning a lot lately. Mm -hmm. We're going to see him in the team roping a little later as well, talking about Cowboys that they're in more than one event. Yep. Here's the Cowboys been making waves on the rodeo circuit. One of the young guns. Man, they but, are. You know, the, he started out in junior rodeos. He started off dummy Lane roping, Webb. which is where you literally just stand there and you rope the dummy. He started off in dummy roping. He practiced uh, planking and tying Back in the and rope. went from dummy roping to breakaway roping and now mm -hmm. to tying calves down. Wow. So that's kind of the progression for this. Well, I mean, it, it's three. a tremendous talent. And I, I don't know, do you have a favorite the time to be right now. of no. any of the categories? Oh, calf roping, absolutely. Calf roping is Because right, we'll that's what I did mainly. Uh, next to that is team roping, but I've got to put barrel in racing corner. in there because my wife and daughter right. and, and Terry <laughs> breakaway ropes too. But uh, I've, as a rodeo announcer, I primarily specialize in barrel racing. So I do some of the larger yeah. uh, world championship events in yeah. barrel racing. I mean, so I mean, and you travel around to, to help do the announcing. The, yes. So I have a professional with me tonight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. All right. Watch this young man now. Yeah. He's he's uh, Cody Ross. Is that Cody? Well, this is still Lane. Oh, oh, we're still on Lane Webb. Okay. Lane Webb. Out of Birdstown. Local guy. He wants to make sure his horse is in the corner standing. I think so. So it doesn't cheat him on that barrel, That's on right. the barrier. Yep. Make sure his calf's looking straight forward. That's that's the other thing that there's a lot of pressure on you back there in that corner. And this being sure is close, pretty, pretty close to a hometown rodeo for him, exactly there's wants. lots of pressure anyway of friends exactly that normally don't see exactly you getting to watch you compete. Oh, yeah. There's Not the nod. We're off and running. Says let him out. Oh, yeah. Ropes oh, him quick. Go. He's on the ground. Yep. This is going to be quick. Oh, no, no, no. No, it's not. We got him caught. Take him up. Lay him down. 
Gather him up. Tie him up. There you, yes, go. There you go. He, the calf went to bouncing on him a little, mm -hmm. and he he just wasn't aggressive enough when he went to, to get his I hands did. in yes, the sir. calf's flank and pull him. Oh, stop it now. How about we go to the lead? How about we go to the lead at 12 point one? 12 one, and he just took the lead. Yeah. I think we're going to replay here. This would have been That's really pretty. quick if he had got the yeah. calf on the ground. Good. Watch the horse stop and work rope. Yep. One of the prettiest things. So oh, yeah. But right there, he to took those three hops with him. I see that. He yep. was 12 and down. one. Think how quick he would have been if he hadn't spent three seconds. Trying to get that calf Trying to get the calf <laughs> <laughs> right. You're like, cooperate. We'll take a look at Cody Ross. There you go. There's a number 20 man in a Lone Star standing. Cody Ross now, Vienna, yeah. Illinois. Look at Cody Cowboy Ross. Cowboy coming in. I like that. Back yep. in. They'll, Ready to so, you know, if you're down here from Illinois, you've, got a, you've got a run set up three. of mm -hmm. where you're going to be tonight, make Talk a couple tomorrow, right make now, a couple Saturday, down, get home Sunday, and go back yeah. to work. <laughs> right. They said, All right but we're ready. this time of year, I mean, our Cowboys are pretty serious about chasing uh, the money because the rodeo yeah, season ends pretty Ross much universally tonight, October 31st. Some Tennessee may end a little bit sooner. But the dollars are your points, and mm -hmm. you're trying to qualify to make your association's finals. So the Lone Star Rodeo Association will take the top 15 in each event for their year-end finals, and that's where the big money is. So they're Let's trying to, to qualify. Kentucky. Ladies and gentlemen, he is a 12-time champion yeah, of the Rodeo Arena. Yeah, qualifying for the big money. For, for the, the big money at the finals. Steer the, championship. Of course, the really big money is at the National Finals Rodeo well. out in Las Vegas Take every year uh, for the PRCA. This is Quint Madison, we'll get Croft in Kentucky. We'll He's part Second of the uh, Lone Star team. This okay. is Vanessa's, uh, our secretary, radio secretary for tonight, Vanessa. Uh, this is her husband, uh, okay. Orly. Carries oh. the flag. Right, it's a family rolling. affair. Oh, fish him. Oh. Nope. And he just about got him, but I think. I'll tell you what, that's not what he had that, planned. That happened not. because the cowboy dropped his elbow event. probably high to three quarters of an inch. Mm -hmm. And it caused the rope to not come up high enough around mm -hmm. his neck. It, uh, there are just so What's many that? little things that go on. Uh -oh. Well, yeah. Gray's a little looks excited. A little upset, Gray, Gray wanted to catch that uh -oh. calf and work <laughs> rope. And, and Clint's yeah, won a that? bunch of competitions. He's a, a champion roper. Yeah, he he looks like he had a little saddle issue, maybe. maybe. Might have. Like might it. have had something break so, on him. I mean, there's just so many things that can happen while you're out there. You oh, yeah. So many things you got to think about and, and make sure Let's it lines up. Uh, you know, you're dealing with, with animals, but you're dealing Lone with your equipment, with your uh, with your cinches, right, with your strapping, with your oh, yeah. pads. Yeah, there's just a lot. Two. Corey Kirk is up next. Tied White Pine, Tennessee, East Tennessee Cowboy. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll be coming now. in next. Corey Kirk. We get Corey back Good shot, here. Corey. Ready to roll. It is good, yep. Getting the horse lined up. We've in the got. Back of the pen there. I'm, I'm, I'm right, correct. Corey, uh, let's go. Oh, there he got goes. the big he rope got on him. Oh, that was pretty. Oh, the calf Look jumped out. up perfect for him. Cowboy, Look come on, out. get him gathered up. Don't though. panic. You got Corey this Kirk. one. I think he does. Yeah. Yes, there you go. That seemed oh, like when no, his no, no, bone no, and his no. leg come out. And his rope came off. No time for a cowboy. I'm not so there's sure. no time. I want to see that replay because I want to see what happened. I thought he had a nice run going. I don't know what they're doing there. Looks like well, they're, they're just holding the calf down until he gives enough slack to get the rope off his oh, neck. Oh, I gotcha. Yep. That there way the goes. calf didn't get up and start fighting and hurt himself right. or somebody else. Absolutely. Woo, there okay, it comes. so he's off his horse nice. Yep. This calf jumps in his arms. Thank you for yep. the Christmas yes. present. <laughs> right. He strings him. And that, that leg gets out. Can you see the leg pop out yeah, right there? His leg pop loose. Yeah. You have to. You can tie and cross any three. So, uh, you, you know. Yeah. His leg just kind of pulled right out. He That's didn't, unfortunate. He didn't have the his first loop. His little loop. He didn't have it tied around that top leg. That was, I mean, that's unfortunate because that looked you like a really good that run. That was going to be a nice run. That was really nice. Here he is. I'm sure he's thinking to himself. <laughs> Cash Gobble, uh, Dalton, the Georgia. Mm. The recent high school graduate. 
So a lot of these Cash cowboys Sobel. probably have already, like you said, done Not a matinee right rodeo, and, and now they're coming out tonight. So they. Uh, and we're going to see oh, some of them. They got off work, went home, got their horse, and, and drove straight Head here. Head on out. Yeah. Another nice big loop. There, that's got a good one. Here you go. One, two, round and throw. Oh, wrapping a hoodie. He's going nice. for a quick time. This will be. Now he's got to wait. He mm -hmm. won't hear his time until that six seconds goes by, which right. is a very long six <laughs> seconds when yeah. you're waiting for it. It does seem like a long time. But tonight he goes to the lead, 10.3. 10.3. 10.3. Yeah. Uh, he represented Georgia at the National High School Finals <laughs> Rodeo, which uh, I'm not really sure where it was this year. There you go. Cowboy does a solid job right here. Yeah. He only puts one rep on this calf. He says, I don't think he's going to kick, and I need that little bit of extra time. So he takes a chance. But he, it worked in his favor, it looks it like. It did tonight. Yeah, it looks good. You know, it's, it's like taking that last-minute shot from way past the center court and hoping it hits when the buzzer goes off. That's kind of what he was doing. Yeah. And it paid off for him. He's in the lead right now at 10.3. Mm -hmm. All right. Daryl Matthews, now Athens, Tennessee. Yeah. This is a good cowboy all-around competitor. Yeah. Been around for a long time. Daryl Matthews. Get his horse again lined up there. He's all excited. You'll see him later in the, in the team roping as well. Reaches a little bit, gets oh, him roped. Here we go. Well, I don't know who flying to. I think the cat <laughs> flanked Daryl. <laughs> there you go, cowboy. Yeah. This Cowboys won a bunch of championships, and it just shows. I mean, it does not matter who it is. That calf is absolutely no respecter. You know, one of the jokes is you'll be out there having a hard time flanking a calf, and somebody will scream, show him your buckle, which you oh, want. Okay. <laughs> right. The calf does not care. I had yeah. a friend one time said that he was, he was studying uh, rope, and he was reading the inner game of tennis. Uh, to help him in his roping, to help his mental ability. And the only problem was the calf wasn't reading the book either. Oh. So that, that was a little bit of a disadvantage for him. Well, the calf is just thinking, I'm just going to get away. Yeah. <laughs> he, he got him. He's sitting right now in the, in the lead for the Lone Star standings. Yeah. That's not going to hurt him too bad. It's going to bump him down a little bit in points, which are dollars, but he'll be okay. And he's certainly going to make it to the finals coming up this fall. Absolutely. Chase Thrasher now, Columbia, got, Tennessee. Yep, our very more. first roper, mm -hmm. Daryl Thrasher. This is his son. Okay. Oh. Good. Come on, cowboy. Get Take him out up. of the ground. One, two, oh, round it through. There, there you go. go. Yes, there you go. Nice, nice run. He takes the lead. That's a that's a very good shot of a of a perfect run. I mean, he right was there when the calf the stands horse. up. Yeah, so he got off the horse point. before they even yeah before he even stops. So. Yeah, you're leaving a horse at about 30 miles an hour. Every second counts. There's a reason I walk like I do. <laughs> I, have, I don't have tattoos. I have scars. I there's no room. There's no room for the tattoos. It looks, it, so that was Chase Thrasher. That was We've Chase Thrasher, and our final one tonight yeah. is Sid Fannin, 10.1. Mm -hmm. So now Sid knows that he has to be faster than a 10.1. Uh, there's a 10.1, a 10.3, and an 11.1, and an 11.3. So you've got four good runs. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It depends on this calf that he's drawn. Uh, Sid wants to maybe take a chance. Uh, when he looks at this calf, he, and they'll look at the calves that they've drawn. They'll see what they've done in past rodeos. He's going to try to be quick on him right yep. there. Nope. Oh. He reached a little bit on that calf. He wasn't quite in his range, but he knew he had to be quick. So yeah. he did what he had to do. Yep. Great rodeo competitor. That's fantastic. Well, I think uh, we've got an act coming up, yeah. and we're going to get ready for some uh, more rodeo events. Mm -hmm. We're going to come back with our breakaway, breakaway roping, and then we'll go into the team roping. Okay. 
So stay with us as we continue this live coverage of the Putnam County Agriculture Fair. Uh, we are live in downtown Cookville, or at the fairgrounds in Cookville. At the, at the fairgrounds, yeah. <laughs> which I'm glad to be back at again this year. Absolutely. We, we weren't sure last year when we were here if we would be at our new fairground or still here. That's right. We're still here, we're which still here. I really appreciate our new fairground, but this has been home There's for so many years. There's some nostalgia here, isn't there? It is. Yeah. And... Uh, you know, it's just familiar. We're familiar with it. We know where the art is. We know where the music is. We know, we know where we're going to see the see the arts and crafts. So, so we got we got yep. an act going on in the arena. We're headed to a break, and we'll be good. back to rodeo action in just a few minutes. Yep. Day, <laughs> we're like, why? feel very strongly about not forgetting who fought for the right to vote. 100 years from now, what will the people of the future say about the women of our time and the men of our time? Anyone can be a modern day suffragist. History is today. Join us for our next episode of Interact, WCTE PBS's newest public affairs show. We'll be talking about economic development. Joining me will be Amy New, Nancy Williams, and Angela Rigitko. Don't miss it. Star Rodeo. I'm here with longtime friend and national chicken superstar Jody Fry. How are you? Oh, I'm doing great. I'm so happy to be here. And look at who we have. Tell us their names. So Dawson here is holding Fabio. He's an American Sarama, and I'm holding Sassy Britches. He is a blue model coaching. So Jody, tell us tell us about the chicken show. When is it? Entry day. Give us the detail. So show entries are going to be on Saturday, August 6th, from 9 to 3 a.m. 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Showmanship for anyone 18 and younger. It's an educational quiz on your chickens. It's going to be 1.30 p.m. on Sunday, August 7th. And Coop Out Day is going to be Tuesday, August 9th, 5 to 7 p.m. And tell us what you're most excited for at the fair. Of course, the chicken show. Of course. <laughs> well, we are so happy to have yes. you. And look at these gorgeous birds, everyone. Gorgeous, gorgeous girls Come at and the see fair. gorgeous birds like this and many, many more at the chicken show <laughs> starting this weekend. Yep. Yep. Uh, it looks like we are back in the arena now with the breakaway rope. The Kansas in the that was a three eight run on that one. Yeah, Ashley Henderson. Now this is like the calf roping. The the calves so are in the chute, coming out very around their neck. All that's the same. The difference is when the girls rope, there's a little piece of twine that ties the rope to the saddle horn. And it breaks, break away roping. Okay. This is, this sport, this event is on fire. This, there are events with tens of thousands of dollars added in just breakaway roping. Uh, breakaway roping horses now are through the roof. So there it goes. You see, she got a little, yep, I saw that. Yep. she's got a handkerchief tied on her rope. And the calf says, okay, yeah, we're done. <laughs> so these calves are the same, maybe a little heavier, but this is a really rapid, really quick sport. She had a time of 3.8. Sarah Scott's her competitor. She got her rope back over her shoulder. Take a shot, Sarah. Oh, come on. Now, the calf stopped actually harder than the horse did, and that cost her... A couple of she seconds. was four eight with that happening. Mm -hmm. Should have been a one four one five. Wow. Been a pretty solid lead. Again, Does it have to draw. break away or it can she pull break. it off? No, no she, she can't has, touch it. She's got to get that horse backing up. Okay. Yep, she can't touch right. it. So. So we're going to see right here. If and the look, calf had hit the end of that, so she's yep. got to turn loose. Pull it back it up. So. And she can back her horse up to take up the slack, mm -hmm. but she's got to let that rope break off of her saddle yeah. horn by itself. Uh, luck of the draw, because she had a, a bad calf, she drew a bad calf, it cost her that Well, and they're that working go. again in that small arena that we right. talked about, so it well, may be that, causing If that calf real? had kept running and hit the end, that would have been yeah. a really quick run. Yeah. Kylie okay. Kinnemer now, Anderson, yep. Alabama. Oh, Anderson, Alabama. We'll get Kelly Kinnemer back in. 
Now they, I mean, they're caught. Watch her put the rope under her arm. She kind of swings it, make sure that it's balanced, because she'll actually feed that loop and make it bigger when she moves the box. But she's got her hand off the horn so she can get it up and swing quick right there. Boom, bang. Let's oh, yeah. see. That's how that it works. That was really nice. That seemed like one of the quicker we ones. To the lead at 2.7. 2.7. That's okay. your new leader right there. There you go. Yep. And that's exactly and that was how Kaylee it's supposed Kenimere, to work. Kaylee Kenamir, right? Yep. Kaylee Kenamir. Okay. And then we have, uh, how would you say that? Casa? Casa? Well, tonight she's going to be Casa. Casa, okay. Yeah. Tonight she's Casa. I am an equal opportunity mispronouncer, so if I don't get your name wrong the first time, give me a chance and I'll mess it up before the evening's over. And she's from Crossville, Tennessee. So she's up on the plateau. Just right up the road from us. You know, I mean, I even think the horses enjoy this, really. Oh, they, I mean, they absolutely love it. They love the music. They feel like part of the they, activity. They know when they're going somewhere. Yeah. There's a Crossville cowgirl. Her horse ducked a little bit, and she's at the end of the pen, so yeah. she's going to pull up. Now, the gate is shut. She could have brought the calf back up the side, but she knows with, that two, uh, with a 2-7 in the lead and a 3-8 right behind that, there wasn't any points. Absolutely. So to save yep. the energy on the calf, she turns him loose. Yep. And then we've Jerica got uh, Stern, Jerica, Jerica Stern. Stern. Actually, Jerica Halliburton, a Sparta okay. cowgirl. Yeah. Married to into that great Halliburton family of cowboys from over there uh, on the other side of, of White County, over around Castle. And uh, great young men, uh, great Jim, family. And uh, we're just glad to have them as, as part of a rodeo tonight. You'll see Rory and, and Chase a little bit later in the team roping. We take a look to Jerica Halliburton. And, uh, Again, you know, we are we'll here at the Putnam County Fair tonight live with this rodeo. Uh, and, and like we mentioned, you can catch us here. Oh, here we are. I don't want to talk over. Oh, oh well, she knew she what she had to do. There. She just, just missed. Yep. That, on with you inside. Yeah, that just missed. <laughs> just missed. Um, but I do want to remind people at home, they will be back out tomorrow night with this rodeo. So if you're Absolutely. watching from home tonight, uh, tomorrow's Friday night, you want to come on out. Lots of locals up tomorrow night. Now you, uh, we've got eight states Let's represented to tonight. You'll have eight or ten tomorrow night. But we've got some cookbook contestants, too, that you're going to recognize their names, and you're going to want to see them. And they're great competitors. They compete all over the southeast. Uh, but but you're going to want to come back and, and see some of them. Uh, Absolutely. We might have one or two of them as a sponsor. Yeah, I think we might. <laughs> And uh, so, again, you know, uh, the fair is going on now through this weekend. And next week, we'll be back live on Thursday and Friday of next week. Uh, if you want to watch us uh, or come on down, lots of great food from local restaurants are here. Uh, Dawson and Caroline just showed us some fancy chickens just a few minutes ago. I saw so that. you're always going to see something fun and exciting at the and, fair. And I, think, I think the chicken is still visiting with us, actually. I <laughs> uh, a beautiful animal. Absolutely. Orly Madison now. You we saw this young lady a little bit earlier carrying the American flag right, for us. Go. Okay. Rope that calf deep, but a quick run. And we're turning time of 3.7. That's going to move her to the number three money right now. And that was Kayla so Matthews. Orly takes third right now. Okay. For our Crofton, Kentucky cowgirl. So we've got a 2.7, a 3.7, uh, a 3.8. And you see, that they go down far and they get their, their rope back. These ropes are very well cared for. They're, most of these ropes are, are poly. Mm -hmm. uh, the team ropes we're going to talk about a little bit later are nylon in construction. These are poly ropes. And they are subject, even though they're synthetic, and not like the old grass ropes we used to use, but they are subject to the weather and to the dirt and conditioning. So they take very good care of these ropes. And you'll have practice ropes and you'll have competition ropes. Okay. Uh, and all these cowboys and cowgirls are probably carrying eight to ten ropes with them yep. between what they have out here and what they have in their trailer. Mm -hmm. you, you don't want to be without your rope. Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> or the right, right rope for the right time. Uh, Kayla Matthews, Athens, Tennessee. We talked about that Matthews yeah. family down there. Yeah. She was trying to be a flat 1-5, but it just didn't work. Yeah. Nope. You notice that our cowboys and cowgirls, you'll, you'll see 
belt buckles. That's what they've won for championships. That yep. you, cowboys and cowgirls don't buy a belt buckle. That's taboo. Okay. All these you earn them. You win them. All earn the buckles. Yeah. And that just talks about the caliber of cowboys and cowgirls we have competing. Southeast yeah. is a very competitive circuit. Uh, Lone Star is the largest professional circuit. Southeast is the second largest professional circuit. You've got great contractors like the Lone Star Rodeo Company that's been doing this uh, one, two, three, four generations now. Wow. Putting on rodeos. And okay. Dustin Was that Mullen. Dustin Mullen? Yes, Crofton, hey. Crofton Kentucky. Kentucky. And the cap one on that one, too. You know how to make her feel better right now, So they know it's a short pin, and they've... They've kind of got a rhythm down mm -hmm. for this is going to have to be quick, folks. Yep. Yeah, i got to get out, so, get it roped. Sierra Ellsworth, we told you earlier mm -hmm. that we had a cowgirl from New York. She's from Hudson Falls, New York, and I apologize. Oh. I don't know where Hudson Falls is. Right. I don't know, but New York is a good distance away. So I did meet some barrel racers this past year uh, for the now, World Champion the Junior Barrel Race down, down in Texas. Talking. Well, actually, for the Josie Sierra Ranch Ellsworth. reunion. And they were from we'll New Sierra. York City. And they were talking Settled about that the there are road. areas and barns and arenas in downtown New York that they run and compete and practice. Wow. Uh, you're going to meet a man, introduce you to a gentleman a little bit later on that uh, has competed at uh, Madison Square Garden. I uh, had enough. We were com we were uh, hauling together, going to rodeos together. Right, and and I, I didn't go with him on that trip, and I wish I had mm -hmm. so I could have said right, that I competed at Madison yeah. Square Garden. <laughs> well, our, and and she drove down from New York and ma didn't make that one work. Hope she catches work. up on the weekend. Absolutely. But a really nice yeah. Palomino. I, I would refer to that as a Palomino pair because you got a blonde cowgirl and a blonde horse. There you go. Well... Let's take a look now to Crofton, Vanessa Kentucky. Madison now, Crofton, Kentucky. Vanessa and is our one of the most decorated cowgirls is our rodeo secretary. Rodeo she signed That's every cowboy and cowgirl up Champion tonight, cowgirl. made sure they signed in, she's got their draw numbers, the helped with Tennessee. the draw, and one, now she's out she's here competing. competing. And she's a great about a great Madison. roper as well. Yeah. So she and knows the time to beat the two seven. This cowgirl knows how to do it. We'll see how quick she can do it. That's right. And the Vanessa is from Crofton, Kentucky. Makes a turn. Let's see what she's got. Settles into that corner. Vanessa Madison. Make sure the calf's straight. Yep, Nods. Here right, we go. go. Swings. Rope oh, him. Yes. No, we ran oh, through the loop. Not to be there you go. All right. Here. So I, when no she time. ropes and Vanessa they pull it back, that's called pulling your slack. And that pulls the rope up tight. She roped that calf really deep. And when she pulled the slack, she just couldn't tighten it up enough so that it would come tight off the So you win her tonight. Kaylee Kenimer and Anderson, Alabama with that 2 7. But now there'll be other people compete tonight mm -hmm. and then tomorrow night. So one of the things that's a little hard to understand about a rodeo is, is that there are people tonight, tomorrow night and tonight that compete against each other. Three. And that 2-7, three. while she's in the lead, right. she hasn't won this rodeo. Uh, that's right. So we got to see how tomorrow night. And Another right. good reason for our viewers to come out tomorrow night. Right. right. Yeah. Uh, and, and see what's happened. Because yeah. we're going to go to our break. Then we're going to come back to our backstage pass. And we'll be back to more rodeo action with the team roping right after this. Next time on Antiques Roadshow. Godzilla has become the ultimate pop icon. How cool is Godzilla? Everybody loves Godzilla. It's really a great find. I'm so happy you brought it in today. Find out more next time on Antiques Roadshow from the Hotel Del Coronado. John Tavius Willis is a young guitarist and singer from Georgia who embodies the rhythms and feeling of traditional country blues. Well, the world's in a tangle. It's time to make a visit with John Tavius Willis coming up on David Holt State of Music. Welcome back to Backstage Pass. I am Caroline Moore here with Fairboard Vice President Tom Steger. Tom, what is your role as Vice President? 
Well, I primarily help with sponsorship. I raise most of the, um, or a lot of the money. I help organize the group of folks who are actually out there doing the work. How early do you start planning the fair? Oh, it's, we'll start, we've actually already started on next year's schedule. So, so the work never ends? Never ends. What is your favorite thing about the fair? Oh, I love horse events. Um, we, we have some horses of our own and we ride and um, so things like the rodeo, um, all the, the county horse show, you know, walking horse show, all of it. We just love it. What's something that makes the Putnam County Fair different from everybody else? What do you think sets us apart? I, th I think we've done a really nice job of trying to bring ag back into the fair. I you agree. Know? I agree. Um, you know, motorsports are a lot of fun. We love them. I love them. Um, I love being on stage while the monster trucks are running, all of that <laughs> stuff. But, but you know, the ag and uh, bringing that back into our community, I it's think, important. is really important. Yep. Yes. Well, Tom, it's great to have you here. Thank you for being in Backstage Pass. We're going to send you guys to a break. Thank you on the Great American Recipe. Congratulations on making it to the final four. I need to focus so I can make it to the end. I just need to make my best dish. I'm going to go big or I'm going home, literally. Three of you will be moving on to our finale. I'm Kashana, and this is our Lost River session. Keep it on, keep it on. So we're back to rodeo action again right here in the arena. Great job, Dawson and Caroline. We appreciate them and all they do back there at our backstage area. I know. They, they get to have all the fun. <laughs> our, our Greeks out in the arena having fun right now. Yeah, I think so. Uh, he, oh. he told a joke just a minute ago about uh, getting a divorce because he opened a door for his wife. And, and they wanted to know, well, why in the world did you get a divorce for opening a door for your wife? And he said it was about 70 miles an hour going down the road. <laughs> So, and, and you asked me if there's anybody else out there with him. No, he's, he's working with the announcer. And a lot of this and what happens, it, it's rough outline script, but it's impromptu at its finest. And, and the announcer is looking at, and getting everything ready, having everything lined up to roll right into his next event. But he's got, whoops, one ear tied to Greek, tied, trying to listen to him so he can respond to him and be in that conversation. It's, it's one of the greatest forms of impromptu we have, and it's it, that's getting to be such a lost art form, yep. and it's right out here in the dirt. Yeah. So, well, if, for no other reason, if you want to come out and just see some, have some good entertainment some tomorrow in, night, yep. come on out, get a corn dog, get you a funnel cake, sit down and watch this for a little while, because it's included with the fair admission. Absolutely. Uh, yep. And, uh... And the, the clown today or tonight, this evening, is Greek Ellick, and he's from Greek Rogersville, Alabama. Alabama. So we appreciate him being out here tonight, uh, giving us a little clown entertainment while we and wait for the next. we're at the, the County Agricultural Fair. It's actually agriculture and industrial fair uh, because it was started years ago, 75 years ago, I believe, close to it, to highlight the industry and, of course, the agriculture in the region. And... It, orig this isn't the original fairgrounds. It's right. been here a long time. Right, the Jerry it Whitson. It was over near Jerry Whitson near Jerry originally. Whitson. And it moved out here, but you know, it, it's such a tradition. And if you're new to our area, which we've got lots of folks that are, mm -hmm. come on out and, and kind of appreciate our culture a little bit. We'd invite you out to, to kind of meet your community mm -hmm. and see what's going on. Yep. Uh, you're, if you're watching, you're watching a great asset of the community now with WCTE. We're the smallest community in the nation to have its own PBS station. And I'm privileged to be sitting here with Miss Avery Hutchins, who is your president of WCTE. Yeah, thank you. You know, you and you stepped into some huge shoes in Becky Magura yeah. as long yep. as she had been here. But you'd been with the station and worked side by side with her for a long time. Yes. And I'm so very proud to see you in this well, role. Thank you. <laughs> thank and you. I know you. It, what are kind of the challenges that you see public yeah. broadcasting facing coming forward, and why it's important to support 
WCTE. It, it is important, and you know we are a member station. Yes. Uh, we count on our support from our community and people becoming members. So a membership is you know forty, sixty dollars, and that really goes a long way when you've got um, you know many members doing that. So. Well, you you bring local broadcasting yes. to a thirteen county area, just like our rodeo. Uh, you bring. Specialty programming, you bring yeah. Downton Abbey, <laughs> you bring uh, great yeah. cartoons and children's programs, and the thing I like, you can turn over to WCTE and not have to worry about where your kids are sitting in the That's house. Right. We love to say that we like to educate, inform, and edu inspire. Educate, inform, and, and inspire our viewers with our viewing content. And these team ropers right here are going to inspire. And I apologize, I do not have our healers' names. And that's my fault because when I printed my sheet, I inadvertently dropped a column. So I don't know who my healers are all the way across. I remember some of them. But our first team out now, this is, this is the team event of rodeo. Uh, we Lord, talked on about the out on the, on the range Delvis. when you had to doctor a big up. cow. There were two bigs to tie down like we did the calves. Two, so two of you would rope him. Okay. The, guy, the first guy, he is going to rope the head. He's called the header. Okay. The guy that's going to rope the heels, he's called the, the humor. Right. There we go. Now, right. they're not tied onto the saddle horn. So he reached out, tried to rope that steer, and he has to turn him for the healer to pick up the, the heels. It's illegal if the healer ropes the heels before the steer is turned. Okay. So we like to say that the healer, that the header is the quarterback. Gotcha. And he's going to set up the play, and how he sets that steer can actually pick up the steer's hind legs and make it easier on the healer. The, he the healer comes he in, and he's like the wide receiver that finishes the play. That's They're not tied young. to their horn, Here's so they have to dally man. or they have to wrap right the horn, the, the, the rope around up. the horn. Uh, the safest sport in professional rodeo JD. is team roping. Blake. It is Blake. ten Blake. times, Blake. ten times Blake. more Blake. dangerous Blake. than professional football. The safest sport in rodeo. Uh, you lose thumbs, you lose hands. My my son-in-law is a fantastic roper. You'll see his brother tonight. He's usually here. He he broke his hand uh, at a rodeo about six weeks ago. He's already qualified for some finals this fall. He's won that much wow. that he can actually set up and heal out. But Chris is getting better and getting ready to get back into action. It's really tough for him to sit and watch this and not be in the arena competing. Mm -hmm. But he, it, it's like a boxer's break. When he when he went to Dally and came across mm -hmm. the saddle horn and hit it with the bottom of his hand, and there's enough force when you do that that actually broke bones right, in his hand. And he'll be ready to go a little bit later in the year? Probably here, we hope, in a couple of weeks. Okay. Uh, but he's, you know. does, does he have a favorite arena that he likes to go to? He's rodeoed all over the United States and up into Canada. So uh, the ones he wins money in, that's his favorite. All right. Now, there's a run for you. Looking like we're all clean out there in the field. Okay. Maybe we'll get a replay on that. 5.1 for that team. And J.D. Young was the header on that one. And they, they, they. Here Here's go. a replay. Here we go. The healer moves in. Oh, he narrowly dropped it, but he yes, got his sir. dally back. Yep. Now, if he had just caught one hind foot, it would right. have been a five-second penalty. Okay. So you can break the barrier and pick up one hind foot and have 15 seconds and just in penalties in this event. Wow. Well, it's, I mean, everything goes really fast, so you've got to stay on it. you got to stay out there and stay focused. Everything's pretty quick. It's going to go really quick. And then, um, like we mentioned. Kenny Anderson is up next, and mm -hmm. I do know that our right, Julian, uh, Matt Julian, Julian's Body Shop, Matt Julian's Auto Body out here right. South Jefferson here. He's our healer on this one. Okay. So Cookville of Sparta, they're from Sparta, Tennessee. So Matt's over on the far side. Okay. Kenny Anderson's his partner here from Sparta, Tennessee. Okay. Now, Matt's, Matt's job not only is to get the heels, but it's, it's kind of helped shape that steer up a little bit. Uh, so the healer is, is watching 
You see, he's got his horse off the corner, not crowded in. He's watching his header, yep. watching his quarterback, because yep. he's going to call the signal here. He there nods. He Julie, now he pushes go. that steer over a little bit. Matt's got his rope picked up, waiting for him to turn him, reaches in. And, oh, oh, that steer scotched a little bit, and he couldn't get the rope up under his heels. Again, a, a small pin. Your header, when he turned him toward the fence, didn't have room to pull him and keep yeah. the steer running, keep the steer traveling. Because you really need him to pick up those back you legs do. to be able to rope them good. You do. And they were, even though the chute is on the far right side of the arena, they were really tied against the fence. Yep. And Matt Matt was in perfect position, did everything he could. It just didn't work that time. No, sometimes even when it's perfect. Even when you're perfect. Marvin Billings, Sparta, Tennessee. And Marvin is riding, ri roping with a friend of mine and an old rodeo partner, Joe Adcock. Joe, Adcock. Uh, Joe, I was talking about Madison Square Garden earlier. Joe's been all over the all over the United States rodeoing as well. A great champion, and I had the privilege of rodeoing with him uh, as a partner for years, and really enjoyed roping with him. His son just entered the real estate business here in Cookville, but he's a champion roper, and you'll see him tomorrow night as well. Yep. So Joe's, Joe's picked up. He's waiting for the healer. He had to back off a little bit because they're <laughs> run out of arena. Just flat run out of arena. I that think he's run out of real estate. Over. Speaking of real estate, real estate. <laughs> you've run out of it. Clark Adcock, mm -hmm. his son, Shara Adcox, his daughter, both great rodeo competitors. But, you know, they, uh, the first pro rodeo was at Madison Square Garden. And the Cowboys basically went on strike that year, and I can't tell you the year. Uh, but they were, they were so slow to get organized and do anything that they were actually called the Cowboy Turtle Association. Okay. So the first designation for pro rodeo was CTA, <laughs> and that's how they got started. But that first rodeo. What year? Do you know what year it was? Uh, no, I don't. Okay. I don't, and I should have Googled that before we started. At the next break, I'll Google that for we'll, we'll, we'll get back to you. <laughs> yeah, we'll. Uh, oh, so just, just a quick recap, though. We still have barrel racing and bull riders coming up. Absolutely. Okay, but for now, we're at the steer roping. So this is John Lassiter of Elkton. Uh, okay, Elkton, Kentucky. So he got a five-second penalty for only having the heel, one foot. Yeah, I see that. Okay, here we go. There's the replay. So the header. So, and there. he's roping just around yep. the horn. And the horn, the steers look like they've got on a headset. Yes. That's actually a helmet, so it, it supports the horns and they don't get broken. And it keeps the rope from burning the steer's head. Okay. And the, the yellow thing you see there on the steer's ear, that's where his number is. So we know what number they are to draw them out. Right. And they do that before it all starts. Oh, yeah. They get to draw their name. Yeah. Or their number. Or their number. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. So when you when you say I've got your number. Yep. Literally. You really do. <laughs> right. You really do. So it looks like we. Here goes another team. Yep. Oh, Wait header missed. You. And when the header missed, this it's over. Uh, it's all up they to that do, quarterback. Right. Yeah. Now girls can and do team rope. We just don't have any tonight. Okay. Maybe we'll have some up tomorrow night. Yeah. So. Uh, Coming up next, we have Brandon Farley, another local local cowboy, Sparta. And Brandon's been roping. Uh, he's a, a great competitor. He's a great champion. And you're going to see him come up here in a minute. He he's a, does a really good job, handles his cattle well. And that's the other thing. A, a team roper, especially a header, has to be able to handle the cattle to even give the healer a shot. And that just comes with experience. Are they going to run the rope? Are they going to set up? Do I need to take him off hard? Do I need to take him off easy? If I take him off hard, is he going to scotch where my healer can't get underneath? Do I need to kind of pick him up? Uh, when, when he dallies, if he sets the horse and comes back a little bit, he actually picks, picks the outside horn of the steer up 
Rory Halliburton. I, we talked about our uh, Jerrica earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, this is Rory. Rory gets the head. One foot on the back end. Here we go. Well, 15 seconds worth of penalties like we talked about. Oh, my gosh. They were 21-9 with 15 seconds worth of penalties. I mean, you can't hardly win with that. So, so it would have been a six-second run. Yeah. But. You know, I just want to make a quick mention to you. This broadcast is brought to you by WCT PBS right here in the Upper Cumberland. Uh, we do want to do a shout out to Twin Lakes. They've helped uh, provide the fiber tonight so that we do have the signal. So we want to thank them. We also have um, the city of Cookville and Putnam County, and we thank them for their support as well as the Putnam County Fair. And again, we couldn't do all these uh, live productions without the support of our community. So thank you. Oh, ab that. absolutely not. And you know, that's the one thing. I talk to people from outside of here, and I tell them that we live in Candu Cookville yes. because it's mm -hmm. remarkable what this small community does. We've talked about WCTE. Uh, yep. We're back to roping action again. Yeah. Lane Webb, Birdstown. This is Birdstown and Livingston Lane. right here. Yeah. Well. And nothing on the back end, so no time yep. for that team. I mean, but I can only imagine the hours that it takes to practice this and really get good at it. But we have Bryan Symphony Orchestra, which we're mm -hmm. the smallest community to have its own That's symphony right. orchestra. Uh, yeah. Of course, the partnership and the cooperation, when you, when you go to other communities between the chamber, the city, and the county, and the way our city and county get along is just mm -hmm. remarkable. And we really appreciate Mayor Porter and Mayor Shelton Yep. and everybody that works with them to make that happen. Yeah. It, but takes, it takes a lot of vision and a uh, pair of brothers right here, Ethan Taze mm -hmm. and Bryson Taze. They're from Livingston, Tennessee. Yeah, it's right up the road. I bet they were competing over at the Overton County Fair just last week. They were. There they go. He really reaches for that steer. Oh, oh there, look at that. Nice, Whoa. nice run. He looks that back to make sure the barrier's clean. Yep. Now, did you see both legs in there? I couldn't tell. Nice. Maybe we'll get a replay on that. That one looks Six nice. 6.3. Okay. Uh, puts him in second place right now. Yep, here we go. So he really reached on that steer. Watch how it made the back end jerk out, but he, he didn't pull him too hard. That's right. Uh, yep. A young cowboy, but again, we talk about knowing how to handle his cattle. If he'd have jerked too hard, he'd have swung the steer around, and the healer wouldn't have been in position to heal him. He took him just enough that our healer could catch yeah. him. All right, so that was Ethan Tays from Livingston, Tennessee. So now we're going with Bill Love yep. and Damon Gardner. Yep. Bill's from uh, right here in Cookville. Cookville. Damon's from yep. Sparta. I had the privilege of playing football with Bill's dad, Bill, oh. who's a great friend of ours. Did you say football? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, Bill, Bill Love Sr. Yeah. and I were teammates. Wow. Part of the. Now that. Well. Steer or cow, look, steer. whatever it is, looks a little bit bigger than some of those others. He was, he was a little bigger and just didn't quite make that one yeah. work. Okay. That wraps up our team roping. Yep. There you go. Gonna take a little bit, a little break. Looks like they're gonna get people lined up for the barrel seconds. racing. Barrel racing is always fun, and you said earlier that was one of your favorites. It is. Uh, barrel racing somebody is special coming in up. your life. <laughs> uh, and it's, uh, it's just a straight horse race. Three barrels. If we, if you knock a barrel over in this particular race, it's a five-second penalty. And let me explain that. 
we have lots of what we call divisional races, and they're like fights in a golf tournament where we separate the times from the winning time, then you drop off half a second, then you drop, then you drop off again with another second. So you have 1D, 2D, 3D mm -hmm. championships. Okay. And, and if you knock over a barrel in a divisional race, it is, and it's just like fights in a golf tournament, but it's a no time. In a rodeo, because we don't have divisions, everybody's on the same plane, right. then it's going to be a five-second penalty. So it's five seconds per barrel. Again, there's 15 seconds worth right. of penalties out there if you knock over all three. Uh, there's no barrier to break. There's a timeline set up uh, with an electronic eye, but you'll also see some our judge with a flag to back that up. And time starts and stops as they cross that timeline. Well, and the, uh, we do have 11 competing in Actually this? We have 10 tonight. We'll oh, do have, we just have 10? We have okay. some more going in Slack okay. uh, after we get done tonight. Gotcha, gotcha. Now but explain Slack again for our viewers just okay. in case they didn't. So to keep this as a nice tight show so that it's nice to come out and watch, mm -hmm. hint, hit when you come out tomorrow night, to, to keep it into an a hour and a half, two hour performance like you'd go to a movie and see. But we have, for example, uh, there are 20 or better team roping teams here tonight. There are 20 girls barrel racing tonight. There's more calf ropers. Right. Uh, there are more breakaway ropers. So in order to keep the show tight, we only run 10 here okay. in each event. And then the rest of them will come back. The arena will be cleared, everything will get set up, and that'll come back later on uh, for that action. So it's called slap. Now, if you've got a young horse and you don't want the noise, you don't want the crowd, right. you might ask for slack. Okay. Again, your position is drawn, so you can request it, and if it's available, you might get it. But if you're really good and a featured performer, you're going to be in the show. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well. And we're going to go to break. We're going to come back with Backstage. We'll see you in a minute. Bailey Tire Company can align anything. Bailey Tire Company can service the needs of any heavy-duty and commercial vehicle. Bailey Tire Company can align your heavy-duty equipment with pinpoint accuracy. Bailey Tire Company, 6150 Roberts Matthews Highway in Sparta. The Putnam County Farm Bureau proudly supports the Putnam County Agricultural and Industrial County Fair and the education and sustainability of agriculture in the Upper Cumberland region. The Realty Firm has been serving the buyers and sellers of the Upper Cumberland since 2012 with locations in Cookville, Birdstown, Livingston, Crossville, and Gainsborough. The full-service Realty Firm ensures that each client is educated, motivated and updated creating an experience not a transaction southern landscape supply offers a large variety of outdoor power equipment including zero turn mowers bad boy tractors specialty turf equipment turf and landscape supplies parts and services since 2004 southern landscape supply has been providing the upper cumberland with their outdoor power equipment needs here beginning in 1956, Swallows Insurance Agency has been providing protection for thousands of individuals and families throughout our region. Swallows Insurance cares about the safety and well-being of you, your family, and our community. Swallows Insurance Agency, with three locations in Cookville, Livingston, and Smithville. Online at swallowsinsurance.com. Welcome back to Backstage Pass. I'm Caroline Moore, and today I am here with President of the Master Gardeners, Brant Wheeler. Thanks for having me. Oh, thank you for coming on. I must say, the Master Gardeners exhibit is my favorite exhibit here. There thank is, you. There is something for everyone there. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Sure, so this year we know with uh, the pandemic and some of the supply chain issues that we've seen the last year or so, a lot of people are growing their own food at home. So we kind of leaned into that and did a lot with um, home vegetable production. Uh, it could be, you know, what you grow on your windowsill, um, maybe the patio at your apartment or condo, or um, even up to a square foot garden or a raised bed that you might have in your yard at your house. How early do you start planning your exhibit? Uh, we start a, a month or two in advance of the fair, really getting serious about planning. Um, the interesting thing about our exhibit is because there's so many plants, there's only so much we can do until 
a couple days before the fair, so we right. do a lot of work, right. <laughs> and then it looks really empty, and then all of a sudden, bam, it just comes alive. How do you think the fair is special to Cookville, and how do you, you know, how do you think it involves the community, especially Master Gardeners? Well, I mean, it, obviously, it brings a lot of Master Gardeners out. You know, we have um, a great group of Master Gardeners that are always really excited to work the fair, uh, to come here and talk to the community yeah. and meet everybody, talk about what we do in the community, uh, and you know, the Putnam County Fair is such a special event. Uh, it's you know, the, it's the kind of this um, summer. You know, it's just part of summer, right? It in, is. In Cookville. Yeah. Yes. You've got you to come to the fair. What got you into Master Gardeners? Um, I started growing some plants at home, kind of got more and more into it over time, and actually came to the fair, came to the Master Gardener booth, and I was like, these people, this is pretty cool. Yeah. These are my people, right? <laughs> uh, and after a couple of years, I, you know, I signed up to yeah. take the class and, uh, and been with it ever since. Well, we're so glad to have you, and you have to come see the Master Gardeners exhibit at the Putnam County Fair. It's open every single night. Come see it. We're going to send you guys back to the host. Up on the next Song of the Mountains. I was going down, chopping fast and fading out. Then somebody came around. All in lies of Elijah James. Lively performances where old tradition meets new here on Song of the Mountains. For more than 30 years, Ken Burns has been telling America's stories. Now, for the first time, you can stream the Ken Burns Collection with PBS Passport. From intimate portraits of exceptional Americans to the epic sweep of a nation at war, from our pastime, to our music, our darkest hours, to our national treasures. More than two dozen films, the Ken Burns Collection. Here's what's new this month with Passport. What's happened? I'm sorry, your husband's dead. Was he ever in a fair? I need a sensible woman. Will you marry me? We might have a serial killer on our hands. How do we want to play this? I don't think we want to just knock. These and all your favorite shows are available with Passport on the PBS app. Download it today. PBS, where the drama is on Sunday night. Grandchester on Masterpiece. This is a peaceful protest. What do we want? Equal pay. I'm sorry about the other night. I like you a lot. Followed by a new episode of Cobra. Does anybody see what's happening here? We do. One thing after another. Death by a thousand cuts. Grandchester on Masterpiece and Cobra. get you're taking my breath away Float like a butterfly sting like a bee amazing you could find out what you really believed in well what are you waiting for you belong here this is your home what is your sense now of the humanitarian situation? This is making me emotional. And welcome back to Backstage Pass at the Putnam County Fair. We're here at the Lone Star Rodeo talking to Teen Miss Mila Walker. How are you today? I am doing good. How are you? We're so wonderful. So tell us, what is it like to win this title and what do you plan to do? Honestly, it was such a dream. I was so excited. If anybody has seen the Facebook Lives or videos, you can see my face. I was grinning ear to ear, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> and I know you're a pageant girl. How do you train for something like this, competing in this pageant? Honestly, I'm going to be honest. My mom is my full-time pageant coach. I love her so much. We actually go to my upstairs at my house and we just practice 
five times a week. Like, we just do it. It's so much fun. And you're dedicated to it. Do you love the fair? Tell me about your love for the fair. What do you want, What are you loving and looking forward to? I am the biggest extrovert I know, honestly. So I love talking to people, hanging out with people, taking pictures. It's just so much fun. Yes, yes, yes. So tell us, is this your first rodeo or are you a rodeo girl? Do you like rodeos? Um, I. This is actually one of my first rodeos. Yeah. So I... I'm, I'm enjoying it, honestly. It's kind yes. of nerve-wracking seeing the horses go crazy, but I am enjoying it, and I am sticking with it. Well, it's a great show to see, and we're so honored to have you, and congratulations you. Yes, on winning this title. Thank you. We're going to send you guys back to a break. Thank you for watching. <laughs> Bailey Tire Company can align anything. Bailey Tire Company can service the needs of any heavy-duty and commercial vehicle. Bailey Tire Company can align your heavy-duty equipment with pinpoint accuracy. Bailey Tire Company, 6150 Roberts Matthews Highway in Sparta. The Putnam County Farm Bureau proudly supports the Putnam County Agricultural and Industrial County Fair and the education and sustainability of agriculture in the Upper Cumberland region. The Realty Firm has been serving the buyers and sellers of the Upper Cumberland since 2012 with locations in Cookville, Birdstown, Livingston, Crossville, and Gainsborough. The full-service Realty Firm ensures that each client is educated, motivated, and updated creating an experience not a transaction. Southern Landscape Supply offers a large variety of outdoor power equipment including zero turn mowers, bad boy tractors, specialty turf equipment, turf and landscape supplies, parts and services. Since 2004, Southern Landscape Supply has been providing the Upper Cumberland with their outdoor power equipment needs. Since their beginning in 1956, Swallows Insurance Agency has been providing protection for thousands of individuals and families throughout our region. Swallows Insurance cares about the safety and well-being of you, your family, and our community. Swallows Insurance Agency, with three locations in Cookville, Livingston, and Smithville. Online at swallowsinsurance.com. And welcome back to the Putnam County Fair, the Putnam County Agricultural and Industrial Fair. The first night of it right here at the Putnam County Fairgrounds. Rodeo going on. We're bringing the rodeo action. And Avery, you know, we just saw some places, some spots from some of our great sponsors. And we couldn't do this without them. We appreciate them so much helping we us do. out. I know Swallows Insurance was one of them. Absolutely. And, you know, just a quick mention, Bailey Tire Shop right out on uh, 111. Uh, we also have the, the Putnam County Farm Bureau. That would be Philip Baker. And, you know, they're all about sustainability and agriculture Absolutely. and education through agriculture so we appreciate them southern landscaping supply a uh, new location over on rich browning drive just really excited to have them on and board they've this year. really done a great job what they've built over there it is fantastic. fantastic facility it is. they've got all and many many choices to what you need yes. as far as uh, your landscaping needs so check them out and then uh, of course uh, we do want to mention Swallows Insurance, always been there for us and always. an ongoing sponsor for us always, so appreciate their support. Twin Lakes, Putnam County, City of Cookville, uh, and of course the Putnam County Fair for their support. Well, you know, and it, it's the sponsors and everything that put it together that make it possible for us, and we appreciate them. Our Cowboys and Cowgirls, too, rely on sponsorships, uh, but they're paying their own way. There's, we mentioned earlier, there's no trainer, there's no uh, training room. Uh, they they got to feed the horse, brush the horse, take care of the horse. Pay for the horse feed, yeah, pay yeah. for the gas, pay for the trailer, the truck, the saddle. And even, I mean, because I know how to tape. Uh, so a lot of the guys, when we were rodeoing, they knew that I could tape a knee or an ankle or an elbow. Yeah. So they'd come to the trailer and bring me a roll of tape and say, here, fix me. Yeah. And, and we'd tape them up. And, but, you know, they're paying their own money, their own entry fee. There's nothing guaranteed. The, the misses that you've seen tonight, the buck offs that you've seen tonight, yep. they're paying their own money and their own entry fee. Yeah. But they can work their way up and qualify to challenge the world champions at the top level. Yeah. Truly America's total freedom sport. There's no guarantees. Absolutely. Yeah, they'll have a sponsor, and, and you know, like I've got a, a couple on my mm -hmm. shirt that that I work with, and 
we've got hats that sponsor us and, and other things, but nothing like the other professional sports that you hear about or read about. But also, they're not they're not not competing because they stubbed their toe. Yeah, right. Not making light of injuries yeah. anywhere, but folks, I mean, we saw a guy get a a steer horn in the side tonight uh, and walk to the fence. He's got to load his horse. He's got to yeah. drive home or to the next rodeo on That's his right. own. Well, and you mentioned, Randy, earlier that it really is a family tradition. It absolutely and, uh, is. And it's passed down from generation to generation. And it, and it, it goes way back to the... The cowboy days, right? Back I mean, the that's the things days. they had to do. To or you've got some folks like Deb and I that got to learn, got to learn from great professionals like Ari yeah. and Martha. Yeah. And we were able to become involved in the sport because of that. Right. So you've kind of got both. But it's a family event. You don't, uh, you don't do this alone. And the old days of the cowboys being in town and... Uh, we'll have a little bit of bull riding and some calf right. roping, and then we'll go shoot the lights out and drink every drop of whiskey in town. Right. <laughs> These guys got to get down the road, and that's they're right. athletes. So, Absolutely. no, that's not today's modern cowboy. No, nope. nope. and you mentioned it's it's a small window. They they train all year, but they have basically August till October well, uh, they, to compete. Well, they start. Actually, they'll start competing uh, in January. Oh, And okay. go all the way. So it's roughly a nine-month season oh. okay. to qualify for all of your finals that are in November and December, okay. and they'll start back again in January. Start back. Okay. Well, there is a little bit longer than I thought. Yeah, it's there. a little bit longer. Yeah. Uh, in the pro level, they limit you to only counting 100 rodeos. Okay. So you think about driving all over the country mm -hmm. and driving 40 or 50, 60,000 miles a year yeah. to I go mean, to rodeos and that's compete. A lot. I mean, if you think if you do it on the weekends, you got 52 weeks and 52 weekends. Yeah. Wait, is that right? 52. Yep. yep. <laughs> it had, unless it's changed lately, we haven't yeah. seen a congressional update. But the last I looked, it That's was 52. That's about two a weekend, right? Yeah. Every weekend. So they just bring the whole family on the road, take them on the road. So you do. And you uh, like Deb and I rodeoed together. She was a barrel racer. I was a calf roper. Uh, Terry was raised rodeoing with us. She competed in junior rodeos and then high school rodeos. And then professional rodeos, uh, and there are lots of families and couples that do that, and it's it's a great, it's a great, I don't want to say sorority or fraternity. It's it's right. a great association, or, yeah, a great group. Association. If Absolutely. we're over, uh, if we're over somewhere on Sunday, we always have a church service. Okay. Always have a cowboy church. Yep. We're fixing to come back to the barrel racing oh, event. Right. This is an all cowgirl event, and. Like we talked a little bit about earlier, if you didn't hear us before the break, get in and out of the arena, only three barrels standing, faster than anybody else. That's all you have to do. Oh, and still be in the saddle when you come out. Oh, right. Uh, right. If you fall off past the timeline, that's okay. Just yeah. be there for the for the time. So stay so on your horse. Stay on your horse. Don't knock over the barrel. Don't knock over the barrel. Be and quicker than anybody else. That's get it. Out of the See, game. you've got this. I got it. You've got this. Get her a horse. <laughs> I've right. got the hat. Get her a horse. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, not this year. <laughs> okay. Well, I've got. Uh, we'll get you down to Josie Ranch and, and get you started on one and, okay. and show you how. All right. I'll see so, what I can do. Uh, this is Gina Sapola, uh, mm -hmm. Webner, Tennessee Cowgirl, behind us. I imagine mm -hmm. from the music going, because yep. on these you play music during the run. So. Okay. And uh, Gina is from Lebanon, Tennessee. So but, again, not too far down the road. And. Oh, they're running out at the other end, so they're not running from down here. They're running. Okay. The third barrel then is toward us. Okay. Set up a little different this year, as we've mentioned. Right. Uh, so we are. Molly Stroop, again, a very small arena, so these are going to be very fast times, 13, yeah. 14 second times. I did not hear what Gina was. I don't know. I didn't. Here she goes to the first barrel now, wraps around it. Good turn on the first. She drives. Watch those spurs all the way around to side number two. The horse actually, we call it raiding. But he gathers his back end up and puts his inside back foot on the inside and pivots around it to get out. 15140. 15140 on that. Josie Thompson now to Cater, Tennessee. This young lady is the uh, second division world champion in the National Barrel Horse Association Youth Division. She took five horses to the. 
Good turn on number one, turns and hooks, heads across the side, number two. Josie's got a good run going. Come on, cowgirl. Kick up now, get into barrel number three, you go. Oh, a little deep, but watch your hustle to make it up. What would you say that, I mean, is there a certain age you 15, have to be? 15, four. 15, four. 15, four. She took four horses to the youth national final, or youth national NBHA finals, okay. qualified all five horses. As a youth? As a youth. So qualified under 18, all five horses. under 18, is that what you count, or 16? Oh, uh, she's, she's 12 or 13. Oh, wow. She, yeah. Uh, so 18 she's to 20, probably. world champion junior barrel. All right, here we go, Madison, Madison McFall. McFall. Madison. Kalioka, Tennessee. Yeah. Two good turns on the big gray horse. Now, arena's, arena's very, uh, this being short. Fifteen four oh four. Fifteen four. And that was Madison McFall from Felica, Tennessee, and coming up, Sydney Newton from Murray, Kentucky. Murray, Kentucky, the college up there has got a great college rodeo team. Uh, compete very well against uh, the rodeo team at UT Martin. She goes to the other barrel first. It doesn't matter. You just go to one or the other, gotcha. and then you turn the other to the opposite. The first barrel is what we call the money barrel because that will set the stride and balance for the rest of your pattern. 15-7 for her. Yeah, Brown will nicely is next up. Decatur, Tennessee. This cowgirl is a great competitor. Uh, Denny, her husband, is a great team roper. He ropes with Chris, and they've been to the national uh, high, or the international finals rodeo a bunch of times. Wow. In fact, I think they turned in the arena record there a couple of times and won the average as well. And they're right here in Decatur, Tennessee. Right. So. She goes to the far side. There she goes. Whoa, oh, no, tips no. but doesn't dip. It's still up. Come on. <laughs> right. The three rules. You don't want to drop those barrels. This is a um, young horse that's kind of all over the place on her. She's yeah. trying to get him straightened out. But yeah, to season a horse, yeah. to get them used to what they're doing, you've got yep. to take them to places. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, a lot going on. You've got the music, yeah, the announcers, the, the people. So... Uh, no, Lindsay Calton now. Collinwood, Tennessee. Down okay. by Waynesboro. All right. Down on the river. Yeah. She goes. Now they kind of set up. Do they kind of sit up in the saddle like that? Or well, is it better for them to? You've got to be up front driving. Then okay. when you go to, to your turn, you want to sit back and collect. Gotcha. So that you can push forward in your stirrups. Wow. 16119, 16119. Notice we're doing this one to the thousands. We're timing to the thousands because we're using electronic timer. Okay. Rachel Boyer, Lebanon, Tennessee, cowgirl. Coming up next is the Bull Riders. We have several competing in that tonight. Got a few more here in the go. barrel racing. Here she goes. Good turn on her first. A little bit wide going into her second. Yep. Now, being wide there will kick her out further. If she's not careful, it'll kick her out too deep here. Yep, yep. I saw that. Better go yep. too deep on yep. her third. All that happened because of how wide she was on that second turn. Wow. Lacey Thompson now. You saw Josie Thompson earlier. This is Mama. Oh, okay. Mama is a great barrel racer, a champion in her own right. Okay. All right. Decatur, Tennessee again. Like Mama, like daughter. Again, we talked about the families that travel together and compete yeah. together. Here we go. She's working a young horse. So yeah, she's she going to make sure she gets. a little coming out of there. Yeah, she's just trying to get him set. This is a. Well, when you've got a daughter, and because this happened in our house, daughter steals mom's horses. Oh. <laughs> so, but she's got a good young horse started here tonight. He's going to be real, really sound. What would be a young horse? Two, three years, or do uh, they need to be more like ten years? No, they. No. 
horses go to fraternities, which is where they're starting competing. This is Ella Southern, Hopkinsville, Kentucky. But, but they, uh, no, I'm sorry, this is Lacey Thompson. We got off oh. Oh. This is Lacey Thompson. This okay. is mom right here. Okay. Well, and, mom's, mo and mom's going for she's, it. She's going to come. <laughs> mom says she's not holding anything back, is she? Mom said daughter, daughter's getting a check. I want one, too. Oh. That's a beautiful horse. Now, quarter horses do it, traditionally run barrels, right? Or is that right? A quarter horse? Quarter horses, paint horses, uh, okay. Appaloosas. There's a, a quarter horse and a walking horse are subspecies of horses. And a quarter horse moves on diagonals. The left front and the right rear leg move together. So they're moving like this. And it makes being able to turn like this much easier. Where a walking horse or a gated horse will move with everything on the right side and everything on the left side. So they're not quite as agile, although I have seen uh, barrel horses uh, that are walking horses, but they're not competitive at this level. Right. Okay. I've learned so much tonight. I, I thought it was just because they were lower to the ground and they could make those sharp turns. Yeah. So no, they're not so uh, much. And Trying to keep up with the score here, you guys at home. Carly Benton, yep. our final competitor tonight, I think. Yep. Oops. Boy. So. She's <laughs> got a oh, big wide turn there. Yeah. We got her off balance a little bit when she picked her leg yeah. up to not knock the barrel over. Yep. That's right. So no penalty there. We'll see what the time is. A lot of. A lot of your quarter horses are are bred and mixed for running with thoroughbreds. So that's why you get the taller, longer, lankier horse that's a little different. Right. Then your, then your foundation stock, your top quarter horse, the old King Ranch bred mm -hmm. top horse. So you kind of get a blend of both. A pin like this and what Deb and Terry have always preferred have been the stockier, what we call a foundation bred horse. Definitely keep some. Okay. So we're going to go to a break. We're going to get ready for the Bulls. We'll be back in just a minute. The Putnam County Fair is here, and WCT is proud to bring the excitement to you with the Putnam County Horse Show, August 11th, and the Truck and Tractor Pool, August the 12th. So join us for the Putnam County Fair right here on WCTE. On America Outdoors. I'm on the edge of the Boundary Waters Canoe Area Wilderness. As I take in the scenery around me, I start to see how wilderness isn't just a place. It's a feeling. On finding your roots, filmmaker Alejandro G. Inyaritu. I always has been curious what make me what I am. Performance artist. Marina Abramovich. Okay, this made me very proud. And painter Kahindi Wiley. This is intense. In Afghanistan, the Taliban's crackdown on women. Undercover, correspondent Ramita Navai finds those who have been punished by the regime and the defiant voices fighting back. These women say they're risking their lives just by being here. Welcome back to Backstage Pass. We have in hand some Pelican Snowballs. They are here at the fair. Yes. And they're delicious. Cold, delicious, nutritious, full of sugar, and that's the way we like it. Yes, well, that's what you need at the fair because it is hot, yeah. it is humid, it yeah. can get a little sticky, especially if you're wearing a long sleeve shirt. Yeah. And you need a little refreshment. And if your hands get sticky, that's all part of the fun. Yes, it's all part of the fun. There's hand, hand sanitizer around. Yeah. Come <laughs> see Pelican Snowballs at the fair right beside the main stage for delicious, ice-cold, refreshing treats. Yes. Bone apple tea. See you soon. We're going to send you back. And we're back with bull riding action going on right now. And we're getting ready for Lincoln Darrell, Cynthiana, Kentucky, our first contestant. Now, these are shoot run 
which means when, when a cowboy gets ready, they're going to open that chute. We're not sure who it's going to be. So, but our arena announcers told us that Lincoln is. There you see Greek Alec. He's in his barrel. He's got a dummy set up over the side. Uh, we've got a bullfighter out there to help him out a little bit. That's right. He I would think this is opens. probably the most dangerous part of the rodeo. Oh, absolutely. Rodeo. Now, he's not required to spur like they were in the horse events. Okay. So he's not required to spur or have his feet at any particular part, but he cannot touch the bull with his free hand. Okay. So he's got one hand wrapped in a rope, which, and you can see a good shot of the bull rope there. So you put your hand in the rope, and what holds the rope on the bull is your hand. So you've got your hand in it, and they bring the rope up around and run it back through your hand again. Mm. So he's going to take his glove, which is really rosined up, tuck his fingertips up under that rope, roll his hand forward. So if he goes away from his hand, he won't be able to get slack on it and get himself out. That's how they get hung up in this event. Yeah, yeah. Of course, if he does spur, it's going to give more points. Again, height okay. of the score is going to come. Each judge has 1 to 25 for the bull and 1 to 25 for the cowboy. Total of 100 points. Wow. So high of it's from the bull. So you definitely want a bull that's got some spunk. Okay. Looks like we're getting a good tight shot there. Uh, Reed Arnold, Ripley, Tennessee. He's number one in the Lone Star standings right now. So he wants to go in with a high point lead into the finals. And he's going to try to add to that lead right now. Okay. You can see what we were talking about where him getting his hand just right. I that see glove. that. Yep. Reed Arnold. Slides forward, yep. gets as tight on that hand as he can, wants to make sure the bull is standing up on all fours. He nods and says, let's go. go. All right. Sets up on top. The bull is turning back. He's setting up, keeping back. Oh. Good ride going. Wow. There's the whistle, there what go. he's looking for, so and that is a bull ride. And there's your, the job, whoa. <laughs> that got a little close, I think. <laughs> the bull says, I'm not finished yet. Yeah. That was really good. That was, that, hats off to Reed Arnold. That was a great ride. points an outstanding ride that is good yep I can see them he looks pretty happy about that he's very happy yeah. with that now in the event that the bull stumbles or the, they get fouled in the chute they'll have the option of a re-ride okay all right. oh boy this one looks like he's got himself all I didn't catch the name yet, so. Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to each and every day your Buckton County Fair. It is the number one county fair in the state of Tennessee. The 2021 Champion of, of Champions Award. Uh, Make sure and you just a reminder, all they will be back tomorrow night with the rodeo. We Let's won't be here, heart. but for those that want to come out and watch bull. the rodeo, the part Red two of here the rodeo will call. be tomorrow night. WCT will be back on the air heart. next week, uh, Thursday. The 11th, Friday the 12th, we'll be covering the tractor and the horse show next week. Wyatt Hart's our cowboy right here, down okay. all the way down to shoot number one. Now the position of the shoot can have a little bit to do, especially with a fence this close in a small arena. It can make this bull really turn back on him, which can let him score high. Okay. I can see him in there. They're you really saw him call him in and say, hey, uh, my, my rope's okay. not quite right. Okay. You want everything to be just right when he wraps Absolutely. it. Absolutely. They're pulling it up, see, handing it to him. He takes it across and put it in his hand. If he turns loose to that rope, it's going to fall off the bull. Yep. Whoop. Okay. Looks like he's ready to go. Wow. Going to get up there tied on it. Yep. 84 is the score to beat. All right. We got him set ready to ride. Wants to make sure he's Good standing up. He's okay, asking everybody to make sure the bull's leaning a little bit on him. Is he? Oh, is okay. that what he's now trying he to nods. do, get him adjusted? 
up okay. over his hand. Bull rolled back when he saw that fence. Woo. Leans back on him, tries right. to get a little western, didn't work. So you, you're, okay. you're tied to 2,000 pounds. So when the bull comes off the ground like that and drops away from you, you're trying to hold on to 2,000 pounds plus the energy. I'm not an engineer, but I'm sure somebody at Tech can calculate that right quick. Yep. Yes, it's a I, lot of force. That's a lot of force. Pulling and, away from your hand. And, and you need to kind of stay forward, right? Because you're really trying to keep your balance over. and over the... But if the you get too far forward, yeah. the bulls know where you are on their body. They can feel it. The great bull from several years ago, Bodacious. Bodacious, you could actually see in his eye that he was watching and feeling the cowboy. <laughs> and he would get you up. And, and he had about four jumps that he would pull you up. Yeah. pull you up and once he felt that he had you over balance yeah. forward right. then he would suck back underneath you and throw his head up and bust you in the mouth well, he sounds like a he, fun one he knew exactly <laughs> what he was doing so would that make people want to ride him or be yes fearful because of if him? you did yeah. you'd score really high okay wow. years ago uh, you know we wore hats we we didn't wear face yeah. masks and helmets or vests like they do today thank goodness they do right. Absolutely. But when Ronald Reagan was president, he put on a rodeo for uh, all the ambassadors, uh, particularly China, because he wanted them to see America's sport. So, and it's known as the as the presidential rodeo. And Charlie Sampson was the world champion bull rider that year. And Charlie got got set up. It wasn't bodacious, but he had a bull bust him in the mouth, and they had to wire his jaw together. So he was granted permission to get to ride with a helmet on. So he's riding bulls with his jaw wired together with a helmet on. Oh my! You know, go out and go out and drink your supper through a straw. Oh God! Talk about loving the sport. That Cage Sparks, Sparta, Tennessee. This young cowboy is a top student at White County High School, but has an outstanding FFA program. Terry got to work in it last year doing her student teaching. Now she's at the middle school okay. this year with the first ever introduction to agriculture program in the middle school in White County, Fantastic. which we're really excited about. This was one of her students last year, a good young bull rider, trying to get a start while he's still in yeah. high school. Wow, in Sparta, Tennessee, so right down the road. I'm not sure if I was his mama, I'd be Come all that on, excited. <laughs> we know you can do it. Come on, let's go bull ride. Uh -oh. Well, we, oh, our gosh. camera wasn't quite on him there, I'm but he sure. drew a rank bull. Cage had a ride and started, just couldn't quite hang no. on. I'm not sure what happened there, but maybe we'll see here in a minute. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, yeah, I know. Well, Must have a good right, sense of humor, it sounds like. Ride, well, you know, that's, that's right the cowboy now. life. Yeah. To be a champion bull rider, you only have to ride one out of four. Okay. So, and, th and that's to be a world champion at the pro level. You ride one out of four. One out of four, okay. And you will walk away with $150,000, $200,000 and the big gold buckle. Wow. One out of four. I mean, because I mean, all the other things that we've seen tonight are are part of the whole rodeo, but the bull riding is like. It, it's a key, it's, it's a, a, it's a the, keystone event. A big draw, I would I think. It is. Uh, it's, it's like Garth Brooks says, we're all here because they're not all there. He's a judge. Yep. <laughs> he's a judge. Yeah, he's a judge. He's got a mustache on him like wild earth, take a dirt load. Now, we, we talked a little bit about earlier about the Bush Gardens, and you did look that up. It was. I did. 1936. 1936. There was a rodeo in Bush Gardens. In, uh, not in Bush Gardens, not Bush Gardens. in uh, uh, Madison Square Gardens. Madison Square Gardens. Excuse me. Yes. Madison Square Gardens. And you so, mentioned getting those. They see him, see him rubbing his hand on his rope. Yep. I He's see got that. black tar rosin 
Let's go to the Kansas City now, our number six man in our IPRA world stand. I didn't catch his name. I didn't think he threw it. Okay. He's number six in the world. Let's go to Austin Neal. Right Austin Neal, yeah. Cookville, Cowboy Tennessee. Ride. Number six in the Lone Star Association. That's huge. Hometown Cowboy. Let's go. Oh, down oh. in the well. <laughs> just, just too much on uh. that hand. Bull kind of had a little stutter step, really yep. jammed him hard, and the cowboy just had to step away from it. Yeah. Looks like he's a little disappointed there, probably. And it's for our well, rodeo cowboys and cowgirls believe that second place is first loser. I'm sorry, say. Second place is first loser. Oh, God. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> there are not participation <laughs> trophies here. No. I would think not. Still trying to get through there. Right. It's a good shot of a, of a bull riding glove and, and yep, get, you can see him right there. Get a the, strap. Yep. That's uh, yep. Get his helmet on there, hopefully, and his vest. Cole Ivy, Decatur, Tennessee. Okay. Cole Ivy, okay. Now, these bulls, especially at the national finals, if you take a bull to the national finals in Las Vegas and they win a go round on you, you win $10,000. For having that bull. Just having the bull. Yeah. They pay you to bring him, but if they win a go around on him, you win ten thousand. Yeah. That's a pretty good turnaround. That, that's a lot of. These bucking bulls go right for now. hundreds and hundreds of yeah. thousands. Got him up in the corner. Ooh. Oh boy. Well, we've got a score of 84 from the leaderboard. And That's Reed Arnold of Ripley, Tennessee. Cowboy Three Ivy Cowboys left to go. Right now, uh, trying to beat noise. that. that cowboy, right now, they're trying to be get close to it, pick him up. So if you've been enjoying the coverage tonight and you may want to go back and re-watch some of it, they can find the stream on Facebook, uh, on WCTE's Facebook. Check that out. And you can keep up with everything going on at WCT on Facebook. You all do a great job of, of keeping everybody informed and, and being a, a partner for the community. Yes, thank you. We do try to keep all the many things that we have going on, new shows, new events. And we were talking about you in, in the position and, and what you're doing now. Is it what you thought it would be when you stepped into the role? I think it's been better, actually. Okay. Yep. Absolutely That's think it's better. That's good. <laughs> Didn't catch your cowboy's name, but he's yeah. trying to make sure everything's upright. Yep. There they go. Let's go he didn't waste much he's time in there. Out he ride. went. Here's yeah. a good ride. Good Had ride. him started. Yeah. That's got away from that hand a little bit. The whistle blows, the bull knows it's over with. So, okay, He's we'll like, go I'm home. good. Is it time to eat? Yeah. <laughs> right. Time to go back. He works eight seconds a week. <laughs> right. <laughs> He's got to keep up his weight, yeah. you know. he got to yeah. keep up that weight, all that muscle there. There's another one that's thinking, I think I could go a little longer. Now, what is the rope around his neck? What is that? Is that just where well, they were trying to catch him? That's where they roped him so they can kind of help tow him out like they're doing right now. Help, help get him out there. Yeah. That's but he would never charge the... Uh, oh, yeah, he would. Would he charge the horse? Oh, absolutely. Oh, okay. Right. The horse doesn't seem to be that concerned about it. But. They've done that enough. Those pickup horses yeah. are, are, are really good athletes in themselves. Yeah. And they've done a good job of it, but... 
Yeah, I mean, sometimes the, the bull just doesn't want to leave the ring. So yeah, right. you've got to yes. rope him and become a tow service and help That's him right. out. All right, dude, out you go. But when you're towing and you're looking back and you feel the slack come in the rope, that means he's coming your way. Right. And uh, you either kick up another gear or find some place to go because, Woo. yeah. He, he's definitely in that good linebacker position oh, compared yeah. to you and your horse. Well, and I'm sure he's all worked up. Oh, he's, had a little he's ride, out there so. having fun and, yeah. and showing off. Oh, yeah. They like to show off. Absolutely. So but. we've got two champions left to go. Yeah. Uh, 84 points still in the lead. Reed Arnold with Reed a great Arnold. ride. Ripley, Tennessee. And, and that was a classic bull ride. I'm glad you all got to see that. We had the replay of it. WCT did a great job, as always, filming that. Yeah, thank you. We so do what enjoy a, being out here. What events, other than the fair, what have y'all got coming up? Oh, gosh, we've, we've got a film festival coming up at the end of August, August 27th. That's at the Drama Center. It's going to be at the Drama Center, Cookville Performing Arts Center. Great partners with that. It's going to be all day independent films. We have uh, film producers coming in from California, Oxford, Mississippi. Wow. And uh, we've actually partnered with the River Run International Film Festival this okay. year which is in North Carolina. They have about 20,000 people that come to their film festival in April. But we're going to actually be showing two of their films. Okay. Uh, lots, lots. And you can buy a ticket. You can get one for a couple hours or the whole day, whatever okay. you like. So. Great events. Of course, you're getting ready for the Haunted Hive. Yep. Haunted Blues Hive and, and Blues and Breeze are on the same day, and that's always fun in October. Probably... One, those two events together have really become a, a weekend destination for a lot of people. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, you I know, see Haunted Half t-shirts all over the place when you travel. Oh, well, you know, when you run a Haunted Half or a Half Marathon, it's all about the shirt. Absolutely. So you yes. want to earn that shirt. And we are going to be hosting that October 15th. Uh, of course, registrations are available. Blues and Breeze tickets are on sale. Uh, so those early birds that want to go ahead and get their tickets, okay. it's time. Then you've so. got, of course, the Christmas parade coverage Oh yeah. coming up. Not to be rushing the season, no. Hobby Lobby, <laughs> but, you know. Yeah. Uh, oh, gosh. You know, we've got so many new shows. Oh, here we go. Looks like we got got another rider here. But, you know, WCT teams, we've been busy doing lots of uh We've got some new shows coming up in September that we're really excited about. So check out the website for more information. Always. He's fixing to ride the bull called Maverick. Maverick. Not sure who our cowboy is. We apologize to his friends and family at home. Yeah. But with them being shoot run like this, we don't have anybody down there calling out the numbers. Well, they're saying he's a hometown cowboy, and the only one I've got is Austin Neal. Okay, I thought well. Austin had already bucked, but Austin Neal, oh, that's a cowboy. Go. Here we go. Cookville, okay. here's your cowboy. Ooh. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> that's what that bullfighter did, saved that cowboy's life. Absolutely. The way he got in there and distracted the bull. Yeah. And here we okay. go. We're going to get to watch this oh again. Oh, my gosh. Woo. He kind of got That's banged up there, but the bull stopping. went after him. Now, watch your yep. bullfighter get in on top of him. He gets between the bull and the cowboy, gets the bull distracted. The bull throws him up on the chute. Yep. I saw that. Okay. Well, that might be a little too close for comfort. I don't know about you or any of this. That's... Uh, uh, Years ago at Clarence Bartlett's farm in Dry Valley, John Bartlett and I rode some steers with not a bull rope, just a rope. Didn't know anything what we were doing. Didn't have a clue, but I got enough out of that experience that I didn't want to do this. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, I think that, you're a smart man. That, that helped. Yeah. That helped. Well, it's and neither did John. We, yeah. Neither one of us pursued You knew your limitations. That was it right there. Yeah, we, yeah. we stuck with other things. No, I, I do have great respect, though, for the talent and the people that want to do that because it's amazing. It is, and they they study. I mean, they don't, just don't show up and get on a bull. That's right. They, they exercise. They stay in physical shape. They do things specific to their events. Uh, the, the growing muscle on a bull rider on, on a professional bull rider gets shredded 
Donny Gay. Some of y'all know him from Mesquite Rodeo and, and is a great rodeo announcer. Great world champion, eight-time world champion bull rider. Uh, Donny's uh, growing muscles were pulled all the way up into to his stomach. Because I used to make a thing that he could he could ride with, mm -hmm. but there there are just so many things to get injured. But you think yeah. about that 2,000 pounds of bull moving side to side underneath you, and mm -hmm. you're trying to squeeze, and he, he can rip a, a knee out, rips oh, a yeah. growing muscle, uh, hip joints. Okay, looks like we got one more. Got some good music going anyway. Get the crowd Rock excited. And and Getting him loaded up. After seeing that one just a few minutes ago, I don't know that I'd be ready to get on with <laughs> Had to be the one after that, right? Yeah. Yep. Well, they've seen enough of it, they know. Yep. Waiting to hear the name of our cowboy. Yep. Okay. He knows he's got to beat 84. That's right. But right now, a 70 point ride to get him a check. Got to stay on for that eight seconds. Just a few moments ago. We got him settled back in. Armed and dangerous, the bucket bull. Cole Ivy, you got to be 85 to get the lead in Cookville, Tennessee. Here it is. Slide up off your Cole pockets, Ivey. cowboy. Cole Nod Ivey. Your head. He gets a re-ride. Apparently the bull fouled him. We talked about that. Ride. So he's going to take Cookville, a re-ride right here. Try to, get, right try to get a higher score. Okay. Oh. oh. Again, there's our, co there's our cowboy lifesaver right yep. there in the middle of him. Oh my gosh. Yep, well, there he goes. Another thing that really gets injured with saddle bronc and, and bull riders as well is their elbow joints get hyperextended and ripped out with that force dropping away from right. them. When they're pulling back. Like, yeah. This is, uh, but you know, these cowboys and cowgirls condition themselves physically and mentally to be able to compete. A great night of rodeo, 84 points, which is a great score in the bull riding, all the events. Okay. You can see everybody kind of wrapping up for the night. And um, I guess we're gonna wrap up too here shortly. Yeah. Okay, okay, so we're going to toss to a break. Thanks for being with us at the rodeo tonight. We've enjoyed having you. Thank you for being here with me. It's a lot of fun, Avery. Thank you, Randy. We're going to a break. We're going to come back to backstage. Right, that was fantastic. Next episode. Hi, I'm Michelle Price. Join us for our next episode of Interact, WCTE PBS's newest public affairs show. We'll be talking about economic development. Joining me will be Amy New, Nancy Williams, and Angela Rigitko. Don't miss it. was so relatable. Yeah, I'm only trying to highlight a problem that's going on all around the world. Love purely for the sake of love. I'm not a political figure. I am a humanitarian figure. And always have been and always will be. Thank you so much for spending time with us tonight at the Lone Star Rodeo. I'm Caroline Moore. And I'm Dawson Davidson. We've had such a great time watching the rodeo guests compete. And we'll see you all next week at the Truck and Tractor Pool and at the Walking Horse Show. We are signing off. Thank you for watching Backstage Pass. Bailey Tire Company can align anything. Bailey Tire Company can service the needs of any heavy duty and commercial vehicle. Bailey Tire Company can align your heavy duty equipment with pinpoint accuracy. Bailey Tire Company, 6150 Roberts Matthews Highway in Sparta. The Putnam County Farm Bureau proudly supports the Putnam County Agricultural and Industrial County Fair and the education and sustainability of agriculture in the Upper Cumberland region. 
The realty firm has been serving the buyers and sellers of the Upper Cumberland since 2012 with locations in Cookville, Birdstown, Livingston, Crossville, and Gainsborough. The full-service realty firm ensures that each client is educated, motivated, and updated, creating an experience, not a transaction. Southern Landscape Supply offers a large variety of outdoor power equipment including zero-turn mowers, bad boy tractors, specialty turf equipment, turf and landscape supplies, parts, and services. Since 2004, Southern Landscape Supply has been providing the Upper Cumberland with their outdoor power equipment needs. Since their beginning in 1956, Swallows Insurance Agency has been providing protection for thousands of individuals and families throughout our region. Swallows Insurance cares about the safety and well-being of you, your family, and our community. Swallows Insurance Agency, with three locations in Cookville, Livingston, and Smithville. Online at swallowsinsurance.com. Okay, Randy, well, I've had a great time tonight. I have, too. I think yeah. Number one fair county fair in the state of Tennessee. Yes. I, you know, I do need to mention, we were talking about how you get started in this sport. I did get started on Barkmere Farms at a chicken rodeo. Chicken roundup. John and I <laughs> were very good at, at rounding up chicken, so I guess that's where I learned my roping skills. Well, there you go. There you go, folks. <laughs> and, you know, but we've had lots of great people uh, competing tonight. You got to see lots of local people. Tomorrow right. night, you've got some other local people that I'm not going to mention the names, but you're going to want to come out and see them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You come out and see us. And just a reminder, WCT will be back live at the fair next week, Thursday the 11th and the 12th for the horse show and the tractor show. Lots of great programming in between on WCTE. Mm -hmm. We talked about the membership. Be a part of WCTE. Yep. Uh, this is our station in the Upper Cumberland, and we have to support it to keep it going. The smallest community in the United States to have its own PBS station, and our PBS station ranks and competes with Nashville and Memphis and Louisville, Kentucky, and Atlanta, Georgia, yep. and all those other stations. Yes, thank you. So we do. We've got a great team here. You do a great here. job. You got a thank great team. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Oh, we're going it looks like we're gonna have a replay of the winner. Here we go. Here's our here's our winning bull ride tonight, that eighty four point ride. And I've put my sheet up, so I apologize for not having his name. Uh, Reed Arnold, Ripley, Tennessee. Okay. Sets up, I mean the hand doesn't move, whistle blows, and it's still a hard landing. Wow. What a great performance there. What good way to end the night. Great way to end the night. Thank you all for being with us. Uh, don't know really how long we're going to be here, but I assume that somebody's going <laughs> to tell us in a minute. And uh, Well, and just a quick reminder, we do want to thank our partners and our sponsors for absolutely. the evening. We've had great uh, support from our local community. We encourage you to come out to the fair. It's going to be here all week. And keep in mind, you've got the Midway, but besides the Midway, you've got great food and, of course, the Agriculture Barn and... Absolutely, and so the, the, fair, the food, the fair, the midway, the yes. events in the arena. And, and all the if, events. If rodeo is not your thing, we've got uh, all kinds of things going on. Yep. So lots of great things. Come on out, be a part of the fair, and, and enjoy it, and enjoy your Putnam County Fair. Thanks for being with us tonight. Yep. Thank you so much. Good night. <laughs>